Gone out all day. So. Mine has been up and running since. Although I told y'all I couldn't upload those shows last yeah, weekend. Yeah, that was awful. No, dude, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was afraid to take up the work and upload. It's it. insane that like your internet would be working and it wor just be at such a slow speed. The funny thing yeah. is, I, I did the internet test. Me and Brent did mm -hmm. uh, like two days later, and the upload was at full full blast, good to go. And sure as I'm sitting here, because we'll go out and try again and disappoint everyone again. And you know how I mean? We had a big crowd coming mm -hmm. to see that. Do you know how disappointing and... and well, are we streaming? We're not streaming right We're now. We're streaming right okay. now. Well, okay. It was very demoralizing. Let's put it that way. It was very demoralizing. the old chat out. I'm going to read this article. It's actually, I read the first part, but he released the second part here. Steve Howe, or this guy's a... I like Steve Howe. You know who that is? The old uh, Dodgers catcher. That was Carlton Fisk, wasn't it? No, Carlton Fisk was the Red Sox catcher. Boy, I thought you were a baseball guy. Really? Carlton Fisk playing for the Dodgers? I'm pretty sure Carlton Fisk You're going played... to get a bunch of bean-eating nut jobs up here whooping you with a bat saying that. Let's see here. Now, look, look up, look up. <laughs> Signs point that you might be right. Look, this, look up Steve Howe. Okay. I know he played for the Dodgers, but I think he was a catcher. Steve Howe. He, that's who I was thinking of. No. That's look not at figure. it. He looks like a he keep, looks, is this, keep like scrolling, skeletor. Humanized. Keep scrolling down. Okay. I'm talking about the baseball player. All right. I need to put baseball in this, I think. Pitcher. My Pitcher. bad. But he close. played for the Dodgers. I knew that. Yeah. He you got, played from he, 80 to 96. You just happened to pick people that were in my wheelhouse. What a career. You know, because you got that Carlton Fisk. Years. Remember, the, there's a big, there's a very famous bit of footage with Carlton Fisk hitting this home run. I think it was him. He hits this home run against the Reds in the World Series. And he's going like this. And he's hopping to the base path. Mm. And it's in And this was before it's in Fenway. you didn't do that. And everyone, no, it was fine. Oh, okay, and they okay. won the game. Listen, it's a World Series. You can, you can do cartwheels. That's true. But no one ever talks about the fact that they went back to Cincinnati the next night and the Reds beat the crap out of them and won the World Series. Because <laughs> remember, the Red Sox didn't win a World Series for like 4 billion years. Right, right. But they, I've seen this footage over and over. They make it look like the Red Sox just rolled over the Reds. It's like, what is, what's happening? We won. Big Red Machine. Right, yeah. You know? So that's the way they do it, though. What's up, fellas? Look, it's working. It's working. Yeah, we've we got, got a new internet. hamster. Two two minutes in, or three min three minutes in. Right, I need to turn on the other light. Turn on the other light. I need some more light. Do it right now. Go boat. Was that uh, John Cougar Mellencamp? No, one of them was Quiet Riot. Oh. John Cougar Mellencamp, aren't you a musical teacher? <laughs> it sounds like something he'd say. Let me get this straight. You're a baseball guy, but you don't know who Carlton Fisk played for, and you're a music instructor that doesn't know who Quiet Riot are. It's like I'm living a lie. <laughs> I don't know what that means either. <laughs> you're back with a vengeance, aren't you? I it's am. gonna be a rough night. Where's the booze? Get right, it ready. I, I've already been boozing. Oh, jeez. Cool. Is, is that a surprise? I, it's never good when you've been drinking and there's no drink sitting here for me. No, it's your like, cup's oh, right there, and we got, got a got little. A we got a little something coming from our boy. Who's our boy? I don't like to call people my boy. You do that. You're the one that started me doing I know, that. I hate it. I always correct myself <laughs> because it makes them feel. I feel like they're, we're talking about someone who's our indentured flunky. No, which is it means our we're friend. In the, we're the flunkies. We're the flunkies that are being indentured. <laughs> That's right, Kate. I was just drinking on the... It's so funny, you know, I talked to my students today about my Ireland trip, and I showed them some pictures. My seventh grade, they asked all kinds of intelligent questions. They were like, you know, what's the, what's the money like there? Like, what kind of stores do they have? My eighth grade, how old's the drinking age? Can yeah. I go over there and drink? It's quick I need to get drunk you. right now. <laughs> so it's just... It's amazing the, the difference between seventh and eighth graders. Hey, which one of our uh, our boys, which one of our buddies is the one that does that uh, that does that reading uh, podcast? Ultra Mangus. That's Ultra Mangus. I, I'm giving that guy props. And have you watched Kate's new video? Yeah. I'm well, giving that props. I don't know. I haven't seen her new one. I mean, she has the, the, the one. The pilot yeah, one? Yeah. I mean, I, I, both are tremendous. I, yeah. I, it's funny. If you told me, yeah, you're going to listen to this podcast where a guy just reads out of something, I'd be like, you're nuts. But he's been reading these old this story from this guy that was in radio from like the 
it's great. I really enjoyed it, you know. I don't know how someone can read. I don't know how many takes it takes. For, I mean, he's ultra, so clearly yeah. he's got some jack. Right. But I don't know how many times you have to sit there and read. Like, if you've got a magazine sitting here, and you're reading in your head, you're going through blah, 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 blah. But if you're reading it out loud, and you screw up, you look like a jerk. Exactly. And, and he doesn't screw up at all. There was one point in the story today where he read the same line two times in a row, which means he probably took a break right there, came mm-hmm. back, forgot where he left off, and right. did it. But it was all smooth. He's got the good voice, mm-hmm. you know. I'm like, how long does that take to get that right? I'm always in awe of people that can sit oh, yeah. and read like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, voiceover guys. Did you hear me and Brent trying to go through the, na- the Patreon names? I did. I, I almost missed the song because I, I had to turn it off. It was what too much. song? The song? Or no, I'm sorry. This is the wrestling interview. Oh, yeah. Both No one were, saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That was, so that was probably for the best. <laughs> so now that Evan's here, Aaron, I'd like to present you with this. This is a special from Norway. What we got there, Boat? Oh, man. A little ball of booze? Yeah. So this is Lenny. It's authentic and it's matured at sea. Just oh like man, that. that's the way, that's the same way you were matured, bro. I know. It's twice across the equator. This thing has been around the world, sailed to the other side of the world and back again for more than two hundred years. This is bottled in Arcus Oz Hagen. Thank you, Ed. In Norway. Should I have a swig of this? I'm drinking it all right now. Oh, I'm oh, you're just do a shotgun it right that's now. That's how you with do no it. No chaser, nothing. What, now, what is this wine or what is this? This is uh, this is limey. I don't know what that is. It's a derogatory term for British people. That's limey. Oh. What's Lenny? What is Is this wine? It's hard to say. It says uh, it's been matured at sea. Have we mentioned that you yet? Know, if this came from Norway, I mean, the taste of this could be anything from like fish derivative to weird yep. nutmeg. Or... All right. We're going. It's it's all down at once. Here this we go. This is for Edwin. One, Huzzah. two, go. Ooh, that's a strong one. Mm. That's a strong one. It's got a taste. Yeah. Like um, it's it almost minty. has no. It's um, it almost has a, a slight licorice. Yeah, licorice. Yeah. Like a. Uh, it's uh, like a package from Graham. <laughs> it's, well, Graham's <laughs> packages are often liquid as that's well. True. But uh, it's got a taste like it's sort of like. A Jaeger Meistery aftertaste, mm-hmm. but it's much, much smoother. Oh yeah, much higher quality. Uh, than well, the no. Well, now let's hold the phone. Now, that's not. I'm not going to sit here and let you badmouth Jaeger Meister, but uh, I, uh, I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, hard to know. But it is. It is Jaeger My- If I was to compare it to anything, it would be Jaeger Meister for sure. You know, you ever listen to Pixel Gaiden? They get these beers, and and they talk about. It. They sit them down, and there's a, it's an elaborate ceremony. They open these beers up and they smell them and they talk about the hops and, and oh this tastes minty or 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 uh, it's got too much hops or whatever. Mm. And whereas we just <laughs> ripped the, <laughs> rip the cap off an unknown booze, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Cling them, dump them, and then try to comment on what it tastes like. That's that's the segment. That's it. This is why we don't have the the booze section of our show. If you if you would like this to become a regular <laughs> segment, this is the perfect size to send yeah. through the post. <laughs> You just bury these in a couple of magazines, and oh. um, life water. Life water, aqua bit. Yeah, but I don't know. It, what is that? Is it a liquor? A oh, it's schnapps. a schnapps. Okay, that like, a, like, a, like yeah. a minty schnapps. Schnapps. I got it. You I know, got it. it. Oof. It's funny because um, schnapps in German just means liquor. It doesn't mean like what we think a about as schnapps. Yeah, I go to. Um, what happened there? Sometimes uh, I just get signed out of things for no well, reason. A, it must be on a timer or something. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Oof. Yeah, that was that was interesting. That was interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to eat a sandwich with that. No, no, no. There was a Twilight Zone about oh, it. Oh, Paul. Aren't you a smarty? Do you remember that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to spare you my, uh, my Twilight Zone. I've got to give Paul the thumbs up. That is a, uh, that is, as, as I recall, that was one of the new Twilight Zones in the 80s is where I... Did where they I, actually call it the new Twilight Zone, like new Coke? Yep, yeah, see, bam. Paul, you're one of the few, buddy, that knows what you're talking about. What does that even mean? 80s episode. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what I was saying. Okay. I, see, the twi- you had your Twilight Zone, then you had the new Twilight Zone, which was in the 80s, and that was the end of it. Well... Was the, was was uh, Rod Sterling still at Rod's, the home? First of all, it's Sterling, not Sterling, Sterling. like silver. Listen, his his 
wholesome, lovely wife just passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And uh, was she involved in the Twilight Zone creation she was process? His, of course, she mm -hmm. was his uh, listening board. He was the one that would give him comments. And right. All things. But anyway, so in the '80s series ended. The '80s series is underrated. It's actually pretty good. Mm. I mean, it's a mixed bag, but there was a lot of good episodes. Um, and then, then they so that was it. Well, the new new Twilight Zone, the third series that was called the Twilight Zone, debuted, and it was absolute crap. It was on the. Uh, this was on the Sci-Fi Channel. No, this was on right? the, the dub. It was on the dub. That was on CW. Oh, or the one CW. Of those. That's the dirt worst, right there. I can't remember. It was WB or something. They're, they're all the same. It doesn't matter. You got that Me right. TV. This was a fail. Yeah. So now, now you've got the new, new, new Twilight Zone, the fourth show. That's the one that uh, 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 is out right now. In fact, the second season, it's on Is CBS. it outright awesome? No, it's not. Oh. I, I gave up after two episodes. Really? I'm, <laughs> listen, I don't want a Twilight Zone with... Uh, is it because of the messaging? I, I mean, I mean, listen, let me get... Let me Over, get overly PC, is that what you're well, saying? Well, you know, I've given this a lot of thought. If you were to watch... This is going to be Latino Spider-Man all over again. Well, no, it? no, it's not. I'm going to give this show some props, okay? Even though I, I don't like it. If you were to... I, we all watch... It, almost everyone on Earth now watches Twilight Zones in syndication. Okay? True. These, this show, you got to make... This show ran in the late 50s to early 60s. Mm -hmm. Okay? So with such a, a few people, most people saw it later on. Okay? So when you look at a show like that now... Um, it seems uh, you can see it as an amusing science fiction show or horrific, or but the show was actually packed. It was packed with messages, political statements, statements on racism, statements on segregation, uh, statements on how you treat a defeated enemy after war, mm -hmm. all kinds of pivotal statements and, uh, and messages that were uh, completely relevant at the time, right? Not so much, you know, on down the line, and so. To get on a show like Twilight Zone now for doing a similar thing, Can't it's not really do it. It's not fair to the show. Right now, if I had been alive in the late fifties and early sixties and watched Twilight Zones, I had certain feelings about what was going on that didn't mesh with those. I may not be as big a fan of the Twilight Zones as I am now. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And there's no way to know that now, but I do know how I feel about things now, and what the twi the new Twilight Zone's doing. And I don't necessarily like what it's doing. On top of everything else. They're an hour long. That's a no-no. It should be 30 minutes, yes. right? And they have cussing in them. I don't like that. And adult things that you can't like. I can't watch can't it with watch my with child. Luke. Yeah. And so uh, that's disappointing. Yeah. What station is this currently airing on? It's on CBS streaming station. Oh, yeah. Much like the new Picard they show. They get away with anything on there. Well, it's not just... I mean, they don't have to. Right. You know, they... You know, They've so got to be edgy for the new generation. The well... It's everything edgy. That's the thing, and that's what they use that as an excuse. Listen, this is a new, this is the Twilight Zone for the new. It, you know, everything's going to be made for the new people. Listen, make your own new stuff. Then right. don't call it the Twilight Zone, right? Because the Twilight Zone, first of all, you can't live up to that standard. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's, there's very few shows that could come anywhere. The and the only shows I can think of that have come close in the anthology world are, as I mentioned, Black Mirror, Tales of the Unexpected. Tales of the Unexpected is not in that echelon. Really, but it's, I, it's enjoyable, but it's mm -hmm. not. But I mean, uh, I, the uh, the new Outer Limits. Was pretty good. When Again, did that run? This is in the eighties. Okay, but I mean, really, there's not had. I don't think there's been any. In, was in, there the old Outer Limits? Yeah, the original Outer Limits were in black and white. That mm. was that just like a clone of the Twilight Zone on a different network. No, no, it was all science fiction, hard science fiction. Really, and it was an excellent show, excellent show. Mm. Uh, but so I'm, I just said the heck with the new Twilight Zone for the longest time because I just didn't like, and also I just didn't think it was very good. That's the big thing. I can get past messaging because listen, I've watched Doctor Who and new movies. They all have this messaging. They're all trying to get beat this beat these messages into you, whatever they are. But if it stinks, I don't want to watch it. Just like I'm not same reason I'm not watching new the Doctor Who's. I just I don't care who the Doctor Who is. I just want good shows. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna give the Twilight Zone another chance. I'm gonna finish watching the first season, and see how it goes. But yeah, it. It made me think yeah. about how... Now, you don't actually pay for a, a CBS All Access subscription. Of course I do. Okay, that's what I thought. I was wanting to watch the old Picard. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that one yet? The old Picard? I'm going to watch that this weekend. Okay. In fact, I'm, I'm assuming when I get together with uh, Matt and or Chad, we'll probably Is be on the dock. night? Possibly so. I might be part of that because I want to watch Picard. You know, I love, I love the character Picard. 
And the Next Generation had some, that, uh, that show was real hit or miss. It had some real good episodes, and it had some The Dirt Worst. The Dirt Worst What's The episode. Dirt Worst for you? Uh, the one where they turn to kids. The one where they turn into animals. Those both come to mind. You don't like any sort of metamorphosis uh, in your track, huh? All their various <laughs> efforts in time travel. I like the one where they turn into kids. Guinan. Any, any episode where she's You don't around, like Whoopi Goldberg? Not that much, no. Mm. Uh, uh, and I, 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 to be fair, I didn't like her way before now, so I'm, I feel like I was a trendsetter. You were a trendsetter. Uh, although I don't hate her. I just, occasionally she does things that amuses me on the show. Uh, a, a, but a, a lot of the holodeck episodes are just yeah. I don't like those at the, all because it's just their I, excuse to do whatever. The holograms they want. come alive, yeah. all this junk. Yeah, uh, except for Vic Fontaine in DS Nine. The he was cliffhangers all are often garbage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Two part episodes in general, not very good. Particularly the episode where they're in battle with the Romulans, mm -hmm. and the Romulans cunningly devise that the weakest link in this battle will be da the ship piloted by Data. What? Mm. Or no? Wrong. They can't get their, and they, their plan sucked. Mm. The, the major Romulans look like dorks, you know. Well, the Romulans. The Klingons often look like dorks. The Romulans couldn't live up to the Klingons in terms of, like, the grand enemy of the uh, of the series. That's why they invented the Borg, because they knew the Romulans were crap. Well, the Borg, listen, in the, in the very first appearance, the second appearance of the Borg, they allow the Enterprise guys just to beam onto the ship and just walk around. That's true. You know, a they're bit. no threat, right? Yeah. Oh, whoops! They blew up our ship. Right. What's wrong with our hive mind? We already blew that one. Can you imagine being the hive mind leader? You're like, oh, geez. But remember when Picard became a Borg? That and was his awesome. Name was like Lucretia L McEvil. L L L L Lucutus, I believe. Yeah. That was the first part of the two parter when you were mm -hmm. like, oh my god, this is awesome. And then yeah, the second part owned in the view. Good, yeah. It's like, oh man. Yeah. I remember it's like they're letting them be on the ship. Why don't they just put a bomb right there? Yeah. It's like, oh, well, we don't That's know true. why. That's but true. Anyway, there you go. That's my TV talk for this week. Yeah. But Picard's on the list. I do want to see it. Um, Yesterday's Enterprise? Is that the name of the show? Is there a show called Yesterday's Enterprise? I don't think so. That would be great. If you're talking about uh, the new, the Star Trek... There, the Enterprise ended, though, didn't it? Well, no, inter yes. Discovery is the one that's Discovery currently Discovery is airing. the one that's currently in the air. It, you know, they, they ruined Enterprise. That show had uh, they had limitless potential. Oh, it's an episode of TNG. Oh. Okay. Uh, but uh, um, I, I have tried to watch Discovery. In fact, I picked it back up with Matt and Chad, but they both gonged it. They gonged the heck out of it. Mm. I, I, I was... It had its moments, and then they, it, it's another one. It just, it's, you know, it, it's not the best. If you were going to do, obviously, Babylon 5 is your favorite uh, yes. sci fi. Or, TV or series. Firefly. Yeah. Okay. I would say those two. Yeah. Okay. So, well, in number three, I bet, is going to be original series. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it, uh, those aren't necessarily in that order. Oh. Know. So, what order are they? Well, I'd say original series, Babylon 5, Firefly. And you it, really like original series that Only much. because Firefly didn't run. I think if Firefly had a chance to run from three it's like, seasons. Yeah, it's like six episodes it's like, or something. It's, so I think it's 13 yeah. episodes. Yeah. Um, but uh, I liked all three of those shows uh, quite a bit. I mean, and they all had episodes that weren't great. Right. You know, Spock's brain comes to mind. But they were uh, the good episodes far outweighed the bad. And even the bad have some charm to them. I mean, mm -hmm. there's something funny about them. I and mean, the acting's always good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, the original series actors, they were all, like, real actors. They were yeah. all from the stage. Well, I'm, it's funny. I was just listening to a... Uh, if you, I listened to a show, a, a thing called the new, uh, called the Twilight Zone podcast. It's a great podcast. This it, is the guy you wanted to have over here, right? To uh, record something in the so, media studios? No, no, this is, no, that was just the guy at work. This is oh, a, okay. a podcast. And he interviewed the very first actor that ever appeared in a Twilight Zone show. He's still alive. He's 91. And he talked about uh, his whole career and how he uh, how he got into Hollywood and how he all the things that led to him get he got his, his, his name's on the Walk of Fame. Uh, and uh, uh, his career was awesome. But one thing he mentions, and it comes up over and over, is everyone back then did shows. They did live theater. Mm -hmm. All of them. Right. And some of them hungered for it. You know, and so when you I think that it's sort of like wrestling house shows. Like when you take that out of the mix, you're you're taking the uh, the edge off the knife to mm -hmm. a certain degree. Yeah, you never people, went through. People there, forget how to perform under pressure. Is what it is. It's well, it's just also it just um, you get used to doing that every night in front of people. It's mm -hmm. not just the pressure; it's just the ability to 
uh, improvise when you have to or to cover for yourself if you screw up. Right. Seasoning. Ad lib. Seasoning. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, uh, we don't see that now. And so, yeah, I'm not saying acting's gone to crap, but I think dialogue has suffered much more than acting. Well, yeah, because why have dialogue when you can have action? That, yes. That's the way they look at it these days. I, I, yeah, I think you're right. I, don't, I, can't, tell if you're, I can't ever tell if you're being a, I'm being a, a wank serious. or not. But you know, yeah. it's funny. There's a, there's a movie on Netflix called The Two Popes that's on right now. It's got um, the guy that was the Silence of the Lambs bad guy. Hannibal Lecter? Yeah. yeah. He, he plays Pope Benedict XVI. Yeah. Oh, there's, you're talking about uh, uh, Anthony Hopkins? Anthony there? Hopkins. Um, and then there's some other guy. But I watched this movie. Two Popes. Yeah, The Two Popes. I think I heard about this. Yeah. And... You know, the movie was, it was fine. Yeah. But the what got me was it had been so long since I'd seen a movie that was just dialogue. They didn't have a big, like, you shoot out at the end or a car chase or something. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I forgot how great movies could be, yeah. you know? You know, I, I, I'm a big Woody Allen fan. I'm a big fan of black and white stuff in the 50s. And that's the main reason. Mm-hmm. You know, even something like you were you sort of mockingly mentioned Tell Us the Unexpected. But, again, this is these are shows that have virtually no special effects and so you have something has to happen right to make it interesting right you know uh another i watched grand budapest hotel did you ever do you ever see that one it's a wes anderson movie very little action great dialogue great cinematography i watched that on the plane that's really the only time i watch a lot of movies is on the plane you are frequently on board a plane mm -hmm. yeah which they change the name to plane Plane of car. Maybe that'll be in the in the next show we yeah. do. We'll when we finish that, well, whenever we get to like what the what's our next three hundred or mm -hmm. four hundred episode, I don't yeah. know where we're going. Then you can just they can we can completely switch, switch the plane. Things. I'll be boat. You yeah. can be plane. Mm -hmm. I think calling you plane. <laughs> How did we miss that in the first place? It's all the spelling boat. We're two thirds of the way to that movie. You know, those aren't pillows. <laughs> you know what. One of the problems with this show is we have horrible dialogue. We need better writers, and we have no special effects. We got yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go hit the Jaeger, and, well, uh, <laughs> and then we'll start You're going to hit show. who? Yeah, you know. You're really, boy, what a brilliant plan that was. I'm gonna, I don't even know how this happens. I'm going to finally sew my microphone into my sweater here. What did you do? It's, you want it, me to get it? It's hard. Come here. Good Lord. What a face you're making, too. See, I told well, you. You got it hung into it's the. It's not messing around this time. Tell me you're not recording this part of the show. All right. Get it. Would you get out of here? That's what I'm talking about. Why is that box with the book in it sitting well, there? That's, not, that's the things. I'm is that my do. book? No. Because I got one of those. I know. That's the thing we're gonna do on the, when we do the Ireland trip report. I'm gonna look here and see what we've got going on here in the chat room. So some of you have, I haven't got to see your comments. Some of you have seen the new Picard show. Are we giving this the thumbs up so far? Uh, by the way, is it, can you watch the whole thing or is there just one episode? Somebody help a brother out here. What do you got in the back? You're actually hat. No, are you kidding me? What you are don't you talking about? I got you a cup over there. No, me. no, I, 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 I've got a, I've, did you see, we're covering this carrier command. Oh, yeah. I can't get liquored up on freaking Jaeger and intelligently talk about this game. Oh, that's true. I was stone cold sober and sitting there going like, Yo, what's happening? This could get interesting here. Thumbs up. Oh, one episode. Just so they don't like Twilight Zone. They're too cool to have all the episodes come out. They gotta do it one at a time. Cool guy style. How is the uh how's the audio, everybody? Any any crackling so far yet? We're trying a new uh a new deal here. It's the new deal. <laughs> Can you remember the president that issued that? Sure, it was Roosevelt. And so now you're horking his gimmick? I I am Roosevelt. You Boy, you really brought that name down with the dirt. You, you know, it's Jaeger? funny because Roosevelt is like universally admired these days. My my grandmother on my father's side hated Roosevelt. He's not universally admired. It depends on who you're talking right. to. But uh, all right. Oh no! Give me a hearty ho, Aaron. Hearty ho. All right, that's good. So I hearty think I, ho! Yeah. Hi ho! Hi ho! Remember that? I watched the thing on Disney last night. Do you watch Snow White? No, I watch, it's fun. No, I watch the. Uh, there's a show on on uh, YouTube called Default Land or mm -hmm. Def Defunct Land. Excuse okay. Me. Is it about Tokyo it's Disney? About Kevin Perger does it, and it's a show about just crazy stuff that has to do with like Disney or 
amusement parks. I love stuff like that. And in this episode, it talked about this incredible party that got thrown after they finished making Cinderella. Mm. And it was a not, it was very unfamily like party at this resort that Disney hosted where like all the animators and all the girls had a pen and ink went bananas. Oh, wow. With, like they were driving, they were drives and driving. They were riding horses through into the second floor. <laughs> One guy rode a horse up to the second floor of the hotel and out the balcony and it threw him. So he went. Ba- Ask for tea kettle into the bushes. One guy drove his horse into a into a pool. I should mention they broke these horses out of a stable they weren't supposed to be into. Wow! They were all liquored up because the booze was all free. <laughs> it was like insanity, man. That's crazy. I love stories like that. You should that. watch that show. Old there. Hollywood. You should. By the way, that new that Twilight Zone podcast I was talking about. If you want to hear some great old Hollywood stories, this is a great episode. It's all it is is just the whole episode just interviewing this guy, and he he's ninety one, so he was there. He was getting drinks with Greta Garbo mm, and dancing wow. at the Brown Derby and all this crazy stuff. It's crazy. He a little bit from it. He was uh, he always wanted to get on the Paramount lot, but back in those days, or any probably today, you can't get on the. You can just walk on the lot. So he had a buddy that was that knew a guy on the Paramount lot that would cut his hair. He wanted to get a new haircut to raise his hairline, which I don't can't imagine why. And so. They walked up to the gate with the guy, and the guy's like, and the guard's like, what are you doing here? And he goes, yeah, we're here to see Mike Max the barber. And he's like, oh, okay, let, he let him in. And so this guy knew that henceforth, anytime he just wanted to go on the Paramount Give me Max the barber. And so he would go in and watch them film, like, all the great oh classics. Oh, my gosh. And he ended up watching them film stuff before, with people he would end up working with in a couple years. It's the darndest thing. Great story. You know, um, one of the things I love about the plane being on a plane, there's not a whole lot of things I love about being on a plane. You had your, you had a double seat, didn't you? I did have a double seat both ways, man. both ways. It was fantastic. You are a lucky man. Um, but I love watching the movies because the movies are edited for content. You know, a lot of the violence is censored out. Uh-huh. A lot of the language you like that, is censored, do you? and I like that because I can watch a lot of the movies that I wouldn't normally watch. Uh-huh. However, this pro- this this has ceased. Yeah. With with the newest crop of movies, because I was like, well, you can watch them, or you're right there. The movie's right in front of you now, right? So, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, but it, all the way up until this plane ride, all the movies that I watched, yeah, were edited for for content. Yeah. However, they've stopped doing that. They don't care anymore. Uh, I was like, I didn't what realize that. Nudity is there? Uh, I don't know because I didn't I didn't watch I didn't cue up anything. You that didn't watch any porn? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I did fire up Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to see that because I, I was that. like, you know, like I like the idea of this movie. That's the uh, that's the one that uh, uh, it's Quentin Tarantino. Yeah yeah, Tarantino. yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be able to watch this with all, yeah, yeah, with all of the uh, the stuff that I don't want cut out. Yeah. Well, the first thing you hear is about 16 f bombs just right in well, a row. Yeah, can you and imagine editing a Tarantino that's, flick? To that's clean that's it up? true. That's You're true. You're really asking a lot there. But You've they been like 15 minutes long. Yeah. But they uh, but they they I guess they've stopped doing the editing because when I watched Grand Budapest Hotel, they did the TV edits with the curse. You know, they just did the chop. They, they chop it off. I think it's but, sweet uh, that you have trouble watching that stuff. I don't mind the cursing. You remind me of my boy. He's the same way. Like if, there, if there's the least cussing yeah. or I don't, violence I don't, on TV, I don't he, enjoy just, it. he goes, turn this off. I started watching Birdman. Birdman was the same Birdman. thing. Birdman. Yeah, the Michael Keaton thing. It's yeah. all shot in one take. It was like, it was all they do is curse. I know, that doesn't bother me. I know it doesn't bother you. Well, all you, you do is curse. Okay. I, you know, I, I worked with my. I watched a lot of Deadwood with my when I worked at the computer bill, uh, the computer store. And so me and my boss, we picked up all the dead, and which was nonstop, just yeah, c- colorful language for mm-hmm. like for like five or six years nonstop. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to get myself out of. This it. was your boss that was the real pillar of the community, right? Well, at he, the computer was, store. It depends on your perspective. <laughs> Yeah. So what's the what's the pl- game plan here, Mr. Well, I figured we just show. we just talk the rest of the night, not That's doing it. any of the shows. That's <laughs> we just mix the shows into the. It'll be like uh, uh, dinner with Andre. We just mix in top. Remember, the remember the episode of The Simpsons where they go back to the first episode of Crusty the Clown from like 1968. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, where they talk to the AFLCO chairman. <laughs> That's what I it's, picture this show is going to be like this evening. What's the scoop on a collective bargaining? And they were just yeah. sitting there smoking. Well, Krusty, and then, yeah, <laughs> it's a difficult issue. <laughs> It's so funny. All these episodes, I swear I've only seen them once, but they just imprinted themselves the on, my, yeah, yeah. on my mind. I will say, there was a time where I watched Simpsons every day before bed, but I, I don't watch it as much as I used to. I've seen them all a million times. The good ones you know well enough, yeah. and the bad oh, ones you yeah. don't need to see. You can't unwatch them now. All right. Yeah. I got to go to the bathroom. Are you kidding me? You were just up. <sighs> Look at that. See how I did that that time? 
Yeah, it's because you didn't have that thing pressed into your throat. It's the mark of a master. I'm surprised people couldn't hear your pulse. They don't. They, they love that. They do? Yeah. I don't think they do. Look at you ha stagger over there. Oh, geez. Get ready, folks. He's had, he's had too much Jägermeister. I can see that's going on. You know, the Bruce Lee part of that's one of the reasons I haven't seen it there, Moto. I don't like the idea of them giving Bruce Lee, making it look like a jerk. That sort of angers me. So that's one thing I can... Yeah. You didn't lose my mic, did you? Oh, yeah. No. No, Edvin. What? No. Or have you lost your mind? <laughs> Jaeger boat. Yeah. That's about right. I'm trying to keep this guy on the level here. You gotta... I don't know how many people in this room today played this carrier command game, my brothers. But there ain't no you don't you don't you ain't you ain't tipping back any Jaeger or having any uh any weird Norwegian booze and then playing this game with any sort of uh uh accuracy. Because I was stone cold sober, breaking into a cold sweat trying to figure out this sucker. My side hurts. That's your liver, dude. That's why it hurts. Go get your liver medicine and get your, get your ass down here. Paul, you're a gaming savant. That's the thing. You know, for us uh, slackers and half assers like myself, who, you know, I, me like Walker, go shoot now. That's pretty much the extent of my gaming abilities. You know, when you when Carrier Command homed into view, that opening screen came on, and I just sat there with a vain attempt to understand. I'm like, what the hell? No, there's no words on the screen, just pictures. It's one of these. I'm like, oh, man. But I did my best. So I will try to give an accurate portrayal of what I learned. Which was, and I will say, I didn't know this was available on the Amiga. Uh, it looked, I watched a lot of the Amiga play as well, thanks to the Boaster. What do you got there? Fancy water? Oh, yeah. How fancy? The fanciest? The fanciest of You were drinking waters. Jaeger straight. This is why you're in pain. That's true. <laughs> but I know you're a, you're a, what I would call a apt drinker, but I don't think you need to jump to the to the to the main event so early. Well, you should you start off with some low end stuff before you just dump back Jaeger into a That's tub. That's what the Aqua Vit was. Well, and yeah. the like three hurricanes I had before you came over. Oh my God! Stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. That's you. Look at this. See yeah, what I did here? Wait a minute. Check Amiga that out. Man. Now the Amiga's neon sign looks real again. Because I way, took down one of those posters. Your throat again. That's how we do it. All right. That's how you do it. Listen pal. to the crowd. They love it. <laughs> did you hear that audience pop when I put it on there? I heard the audience. I heard something pop. I think it was your liver as you were walking up the stairs. What do you think the biggest? What do you think the biggest pop in wrestling history was? Oh God. You know, I've always heard. Well, geez, the biggest pop in wrestling history. When Hulk beat Andre, it was a pretty good sized pop. Mm -hmm. When Randy Couture won the UFC heavyweight title, that was a big pop. That's I've heard that was one of the storied pops of, of, of all times. I know the exact opposite. The most quiet <laughs> ice has been is when I, no, I'm serious. Uh, when and when Ivan Cole, it's funny because you know in preparation for my for my wrestling gimmick last week, I watched some Ivan Koloff stuff, and Ivan Koloff beat. Uh, Bruno Sammartino for the World Worldwide Wrestling Federation World Title in Madison Square Garden uh, after Bruno had held the belt for like seven or eight years or something like that. He pinned him clean. Mm -hmm. And they said that you could have heard a pin drop. And they got Ivan the hell out of there because they didn't want 400 million angry Italians oh, yeah. storming. That was in the garden, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't want to be caught out out in, the, out in the rain in the garden. A pop is a huge crowd reaction, Pixels. It comes from wrestling or... Uh, it comes AMC. from the industry. Yeah. By the industry, I mean the business. Yeah, I bet all you guys' livers are hurting after that trip. Listen, Pixels, he was like, he came to me and he said, Boat... He I'm good enough for you, can't refuse. <laughs> Is that what he said? He said, we've got to do something about Nightbot. And I said, all right. And he took my laptop and he programmed Nightbot yeah. in his special way. What did you do to Nightbot? Now Nightbot's got all the commands. Okay. Uptime, downtime. He just talked. He must have heard Yep. Him. See? That's what I'm talking about. So... Pixels basically he he reverse engineered Nightbot. I mean, now Nightbot's going crazy. Yeah, yeah. Every time we say Nightbot, he's going to do something. No, Pixels is triggering Nightbot. Oh, listen. As long as you don't trigger me, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> You're triggered right? enough by I'm the using, new Twilight I'm, Zones. I'm using current day lingo. 
my kid came up to me. He's like, Dad, you, uh, you're that's you're gonna get uh, you're gonna trigger me. He said to me, I was like, never. I said, don't ever say it to me again. Yeah. Or I'll trigger you old school. They do that because they know it annoys their elders. No, they don't. Yes, they do no. because I'm a teacher. I yeah, know. Yeah, but no, Luke watches YouTube. And these idiots say this crap. Yeah, and the idiots know that when the no, idiots it's kid watching show. it, it's like, kids yeah, show stuff. I know. They are. It's they're right. all in it on does, it. It does. That triggered me. They're all in on it. No, trust me. I don't think kids are that clever. Look at the way you're drinking that fancy. Is that the way you have to drink fancy water? You drink it like a snooty, like a snooty jerk. What you do is you grab the glass Look at that. <laughs> over the top. It looks like you're one of those crane games. Does that say? <laughs> Look at you. Nice work. It is a little ridiculous. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone try to drink a cup like that. It's like something a chimp would do. Is there a banana in that? It's going to be a long show. You have to palm the fancy water. He's, yeah, he's like he's like Scotty Pippen over here. I mean, a lot like him. You know what I mean? All right, you're ready. So what are we doing first? You never did tell me. It's always Amigos. But we've got an extra weird show tonight. We're going to do that at the end. Okay. Okay. Remember, when I hit the five button. Now, wait a second. Before you start, let's talk for a second here. So here's the plan. Okay, everybody, pay attention to this, okay? Because you may have to put up messages for him. It's going to be a lovely greeting, banter, site news, mm -hmm. right? News. News. The game. And then you got to do the YouTube stuff. Oh, yeah. Let me make sure that... The, yeah. Uh, See? That's not what we want. One thing I learned last week is how to... I, I actually structured this the way we we're supposed to do it as opposed to the way we always forget to do it. Then I forgot to do the uh, Patreon part of Sinclair. You see, so there you go. This, but the structure's irrelevant. I even had to, I had to list print it out, too. I wonder why that's like that. Oh, it's because this is not... <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm like Otis over here. Oh, my God. Foster Brooks is here to cover your computer. <laughs> oh, damn. Nothing to be took. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> it's like a... You know, I had a hard time remembering the name Dustin Hoffman. Why? I just did. I wanted to call him um, Dusty Rhodes. That would be much more interesting. <laughs> that would be Dusty Rhodes' hook. <laughs> Ooh, be a pan. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't need us. He wouldn't need to hug. He'd go whack him with the bionic elbow and sit on him. It'd be cool if everyone could see all your passwords and stuff flashing up. Well, they can. Oh, okay. all that was live on the That's screen. That's great. That's why those little stars are there. You know, I watched. Uh, I watched that interview with the Dickinson man there. Mm -hmm. As much as I could figure well, out. Well, don't talk about it yet. Oh, we're I'll talk about it on the show. Ooh, hacker! I love that game. <sighs> Yes, yeah, he's seen him now, Ricky. Are you kidding me? I love leprechauns or buds. Did you ever see those movies? Gosh, those are scary. You don't watch any scary stuff at all? Listen, I'll tell you Have what you seen happened. Sleepy Hollow, the Disney thing? Remember Jamie Hazlett from Band? Oh, yeah. Okay, so his brother Eric and me are the same age. Uh -huh. And at scout camp at Dilly's Mill... Yeah. Okay, I was in my tent, right? Remember the old tents they used to have there? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. And he poked his head in and he said, I want the gold. And I was so scared. That's I was so scared. I think He does sort of look I mean, I said, he never looks like again. Jamie. He sort of yeah. looks like a leprechaun. Yeah. yeah, never again. Never again. All right. We got that ready. What kind of, uh, since I didn't get to read that second article, we'll kind of just touch on both those real quick okay. and we'll move along. Okay. Got that. Now we'll blow this. Some of that. I would move that over. You ever move your tabs around? Oh, yeah, man. I'm moving those suckers to different screens. Okay. You know? Are we doing Amigos next week? I mean, <laughs> that's a stupid question. Are we doing Coco <laughs> next week? Uh, no, Coco is in two weeks. Okay. Unless okay. Wing Chun Wolf uh, gives us a game. Okay. So we're, we're, we're so otherwise we can just make we can just pick some games. We're Coco free until February. Right. And then February is Doodle Bug and whatever we want. Okay. Doodle Bug, boy. Okay. I got it. Okay. All right, so here we go. Turn my mic. Turn my head from. Okay. And Turn my head. Okay. And I forgot how to do everything. Okay. So we want. Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga. 
the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Hook. Yeah. But before we get into Hook, Aaron, I know you have a deep and abiding love of Peter Pan. I do. It's funny you should mention that. I didn't know anything about Peter Pan, so I looked stuff up on it today. Um, what do you think about that? Do, did you see the movie, Peter Pan, like the Disney movie? Uh, a long, lad? long ago. Now, I'm going to go one back on you. Okay, go okay. ahead. Did you ever see the televised stage play Peter Pan starring Mary Martin. <clears throat> I did see the televised Peter Pan starring Sandy Duncan. Okay. Bam! What well, do you think about that? I, I, think that? I think the Mary Martin one was, was first. I don't know that I saw the Sandy Duncan one. Everyone knows Sandy Duncan. No what, one knows who, who you're talking who is, about. Who is Sandy Duncan? So you don't, Sandy Duncan? Was she, she on the Partridge family? No. She was just a... She was everywhere back in the day, 70s. She was known... She was a kind of a sprighty... Mannish lady with a, and she had one bad eye. I think I may be thinking about Sandy Duncan. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I remember the the one bad eye. Mary Martin. I don't know who that is. So explain. Well, Mary Martin was the first person to play Peter Pan on Broadway because Peter Pan has traditionally been played by a woman. Correct. Yeah. I, 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 and uh, I believe they've recently done Peter Pan on like one of these live. Hasn't one of the big networks done it recently? I don't know that they've done that one yet. I know that, they, that this has been a trend that they've been doing on, on, on network TV recently, the live Broadway musical. You know, the best part of research in this game this week was to just, because I was talking to my buddy at work. I'm like, you know, I've seen the cartoon, you know, I'm familiar with the story, but I don't know Jack Squat about where it came from. Like, what mm-hmm. year? I didn't know either. Did you know? Could I, do you know who wrote it? What year? The, where, which Peter books Pan? It was in? Yeah. As a J.M. Barry. That's right. Um, did you look at my sheet, no, or did you actually no. know that? Uh, now, what's gonna, the JM I, stand for? I don't know. Okay. I don't I'm gonna either. I'm gonna guess uh, 1918, but I could be early. Um, the uh, first appearance of Peter Pan was in a book called The Little White Bird. I did not know that. 1902, an wow. adult novel, mm, and the chapter. Eh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Steamy. Well, from what I've been told, Peter Pan did a lot of stuff in the books that wouldn't fly in the, in the movie. <laughs> he knows how to crow, if you know what I'm uh, saying. But uh, it was an adult novel, and then chapters thir- the chapters 13 through 18 were entitled Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. And uh, uh, he also appeared in a set. When that one took off, they, he came back in uh, 1906 under the title Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens with new illustrations and stuff. And so that's what t- that took off. So it just it got over, and then they just and it, it went. From now there. tell me about your personal history with PP, as we call the it. The double P. Mm-hmm. My personal history is El Z- Zilcho. Like there was nothing that appealed to me about that the cartoon. Which or, you know, it's funny to me because you are the boy that never grew up. I grew out. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> but I mean, all, grew all, out. all the stuff that you liked to do when you were a kid, you still like to do now. That's true. That's true. Well. Uh, I didn't say the message isn't re- didn't resonate with me, but just that the movie just seemed dumb to me. <laughs> I mean, and, and the cartoon was well drawn. It was Disney. It was beautifully done, beautifully rendered. But it just it wasn't one. It's funny that old Disney animated cartoons. None of there wasn't any that I really got into that much. This was not I wasn't your, a Disney guy. Like the, the first thing I I saw like bed knobs and broomsticks and the rescuers. Well, you sort of came of stuff. age when Disney was at its low ebb. Well, but I mean, they still their stuff was still there. You know, now I'll say in recent years. Like, I really love uh, Fantasia. It's mm-hmm. a tremendous, probably one of my, oh, yeah. my favorite film of the, from the Disney uh, catalog. But Peter Pan just wasn't one. Just like the Jungle Book. I think it's, you heard the songs and stuff from him, but it just didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. It just seemed kind of stupid, too, to me. I don't know. It's, also, the pirates portrayed like a dork. You know? Eh, come you, on. You like your pirates non-dorkish? Listen, you're telling me a pirate can't thump Peter Pan? Peter Pan can fly. He's got a whole crew. Of, yeah, but what's he doing tangling with him then? And taunting him and stuff. If you know you can't beat him, take your ship and roll, brother. That's true. You know? That's true. The guy can fly. He's got magic. He's got a fairy. You know? Hook's already a disadvantage. He's missing a hand. That's true. He's got a crew full of idiots. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing there? He's Go living to- in fear of a crocodile that he could easily just move the ship to a different bay. Plus, you're in Neverland or whatever, Never Neverland. You, how much piracy is to be done? Is there a big port trade on Never Neverland? Highly unlikely. Hard to know. Is he eating boys? We'll have to something? wait for the dark, edgy reboot no. to reveal We don't those ever questions. need that. 
<laughs> we don't ever need that. So it just it never did it for me, to be honest with you. Okay. So, okay. And I, like I said, I never really knew who wrote it until I looked into well, it. Well, I have my own Peter Pan uh, upbringing. And uh, I love Peter Pan. I think Peter Pan's a great story. And my brother, you know how sometimes, and this didn't happen to me, I don't think, but my brother, who's six years younger than me, grew up in the age of the VCR. Every day when he came home from school, he would start the Mary Martin and or Sandy Duncan version of Peter Pan, yeah. and he would just watch it every day. He was really into it. Yeah, eh? yeah. This was when he was in like kindergarten, preschool, yeah. something like that. So I watched this over and over and over again, because I would come home from school, it would be on. And so uh, that's what I think about when I think about Peter Pan. And of course the songs, you know, the songs are, they're all, they're, I don't know if they're good or not, but I know all the songs. What are the songs? Names Never are the big ones. smile at a crocodile. What, you, get, what, what's the one? big hit? We're it? off to fight the engines. That's, the en that's they probably not the wouldn't big sing hit. that one anymore. No, I don't think it was one. Um, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly. Yeah, Is that I mean, one? Eh, yeah. yeah. It didn't well, do it for me. I'm you know. sorry. Um, well, I want to talk a lot more about Peter Pan. Specifically, I want to talk a lot more about Hook. But before we do, Aaron, we need to go over to everythingamiga.com and see what's been going on over at our site du jour. Well, the uh, the main man has been, he's actually put up a couple uh, little goodies here. Let's talk about uh, the first offering here. Uh, games coder Steve Howard discusses the real first proper wipeout Amiga title. So what does that mean? The real first well, proper? You, I don't know if you listened to Amigos last week. I think it was last week when me and Britt talked about, or maybe me and you, when they, they yeah, it was me and you. They actually, uh, 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 you know, wipe out the game. I do know wipe right. out the game. They, uh, do you know wipe out the game, the movie? I don't. <laughs> Let's hope either. not. Mm. Anyway, there was a real, like a, a uh, much less heralded version of Wipeout that was released. And Dreamcatch actually interviews the guy that uh, that worked on it, Steve Howard. I actually read this article, and it's it's kind of interesting. This is one of those classic, like, uh, you know, when you look at these games back in, with, in 2020, and, uh, you look back on them, and you're like, this is crap, this is great, this, this programming house was no good, this is crap. You don't you don't really get the big picture. These guys that were journeyman programmers or people that went that fluctuated back and forth between different houses, they were under the gun, or the they de these guys demanded that this happen in the game, or mm -hmm. or, or, or they had to, they needed this feature. They it's didn't your want classic post mortem, yeah. Yeah, and it, I, well, I think that stuff's kind of interesting. I, I love that stuff. You know? I love that stuff. And so that's basically where we go here. And this is sort of a two part interview uh, with Steve. Uh, also, if you uh, if you <laughs> backtrack to the main screen. He's also just put up, put up another one, which I haven't gotten to read this yet, uh, where Steve Howard discusses his work on Terminator 2 and No Escape. Uh, so, which, actually, Terminator 2 was pretty good. I, I kind of like that. So, uh, so uh, good stuff. I haven't got to read the second part yet, but it's uh, definitely on my short list. Uh, you know, it's funny, Dreamcatcher often gets uh, these interviews with, with these various programmers and designers. It's kind of neat. He's got a lot of, I think it's just... Uh, I think the way he lands on all this stuff is just straight up determination, looking them up and oh, yeah. getting into it. He, you know? he, he goes off and, and, and he knows, he, he can beat the bushes, as they say, in reporting speed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So I highly recommend checking these out. Also, uh, again, I always pitch it, but Dreamcatch's uh, YouTube channel is always worth a look. Uh, and he's been uh, adding some, like I said, last week he added some Rocky Horror Picture Show stuff. So it's always good for a lot of mm. So it's wacky. Prepare yourself for wackiness, Bo, but you know how that goes. Well, Aaron, it's been almost a month since our last uh, view of the gamble train. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah, you're right. So it is pulled back into the station, and it is ready for action. It's overloaded. There is Amiga news spilling out the sides okay, of the man. gamble train. Let's get into that. All right, because I probably missed a lot of this stuff. First thing up, we've got recoil. Uh, recoil is another. Remember last year there was an Amiga uh, or an Atari ST to Amiga conversion. I'm trying to think about what what the name of the game was. It was a pretty well known game that, that got an Amiga conversion from the ST. You okay. don't remember what it was, do you? The one I remember the most was Karatika. Mm, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I know there was another one. Yeah. So this is a game called Recoil. Okay. And this is this is an interesting. Uh, this is this is sort of like Defender. This looks really good. Just imagine if it, if you've got Defender. But you are attached to the ceiling, and you are basically controlling the entire top part of the the screen while you're blowing things up and rescuing things with a with a um, 
with a with a radar below you instead of above you. That's bizarre. Yeah. That's a, what a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Recoil was a pretty big uh, ST game, and we're finally getting an Amiga port from it. So it's pretty cool. So, so this was a huge game on the ST. Right. Right. I'm dying to hear the, the story behind this contraption here. You know, it, it's funny. The more you think about it, the less sense it makes. Because, uh, you, you know, not only are you controlling this thing that's attached to the ceiling, but the, the entire ceiling seems to be able to move. So I, I don't know how that works. I wonder if the Atari ST had a proper... Because this is Atari. So I would assume that they would. But I wonder if they had a proper actual the clone of Defender on the Atari ST. Yeah, I don't know. You know? I don't know. And because uh, clearly this is obviously uh, uh, very similar, although there's a lot of wacky stuff going on. So yeah, we have to, we have to check this out. Is it, it's, say it's out or it's coming this out. Is, this is a, uh, this is, I believe that this is already done. Okay, this look, it looks done. pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have to check that out. Uh, let's see, next up, this was huge news when it came out. Everybody knows about it by now, but we still haven't talked about it. Sensible World of Soccer has been released. The Sensible 2020 has been released for both the do, or the uh, modern PCs and the Amiga. Uh, Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and the Amiga. Uh, this brings with it all of the new features. Uh, there is uh, so many cool things that have, have happened in terms of what you can put in in terms of uh, importing like chants, crowd chants, different textures for the pitch, stuff like that. I know that you're not the biggest Cincy fan in the world, but you I even like Cincy. even you got to you've got to uh, kind of acknowledge the fact that this is this is pretty cool. I love when they take. I like when they update classic sports games with rosters and stuff but doing actually adding features is double cool mm -hmm. so i'm all for it and i did like Cincy. i mean I, I think it's a lot of fun it's funny me and brent played this a while back too so it, it's a that's a good game and i always dug it it's i mean we're stinky at it you know I, i'm sure there were many of people playing this in ireland oh yeah yeah whole so. Cincy tournament was this th were they actually playing this version no i believe that they were playing the swass the original swass but so this has been released on the amiga yeah. and the modern right very right. good very yeah. good yeah very cool that's awesome i love that aaron you can talk about this one so uh hacker um was available on the amiga it was came out on the amiga but it has never been cracked until just recently or really? never been fully cracked i guess with everything completely working so ScoopX, uh, which is a name from back in the day, and I guess they're still active now, uh, has released a fully working crack of the title Hacker. Now, tell me what you remember about the game Hacker. I don't remember a whole lot because my, my buddies had this on their C64s. Mm -hmm. I remember it took us forever just to actually get the game to start. I mean, mm. you had to sort of... It's you had to hack into it, huh? Yeah, uh, but I remember my buddies were super into it, and I, I always thought it was kind of neat. I, you know... A lot of people would look at this and be like, this is garbage. But, you know, again, I, this is someone I love Neuromancer for the exact same reason. I think it's neat to kind of, like, have a faux, like, internet that you're actually sort of, like, doing the thing with. And right. I, I think it's kind of neat. So I, I I might check into this. Cool. That looks that, that looks like it'd be a lot of fun. It's awesome. That yeah. someone, again, another game, they went back to take care of it. I think that's great. And, of course, all of these new games come to us directly from Neil over at Indie Retro News and our boy, Saberman. I will say, Neil uh, popped in a couple times to your Iron, Ireland uh, broadcast, and I actually chatted with him, trying to put the cocoa over for to him, by the way. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, uh, he, yeah, he was, in, he was in the room, and he was checking them out. So uh, he was he's a good guy. Cool, cool. All right, Aaron. Ten mark. This is the first of two Ten Mark videos we have. Wow, he's hot. Oh yeah, Ten Mark looks great, and he's also <laughs> wow, he pitching, can sing. pitching Liberty Mutual Insurance as well. Uh, so, ten, oh my gosh, Ten Mark has multiple ads on his app. Listen. Ten Mark, he's retiring next year from all the money that he's made <laughs> on YouTube ads. So, Ten Mark is actually he's he's uh, he's chronicling his adventures with the Amiga Two Thousand. And with the uh, with the new tech video tester, which I didn't realize was available for the two thousand. I thought that the t that the toaster was only for the four thousand. You know, I don't know. I I I, I to be honest, with you, I never thought about it until you mentioned it just now. But we actually, it's funny because I owned a video toaster briefly. I never ever used it and did anything with it because I didn't know what that was on. Uh, but uh, as I recall, Neil's plan is to use his Amigas to do all of his video production at wow. some point. So wow, wow. Uh, uh, I'm not terribly surprised. I never, he did. You mean mention, Doug, not Neil? Or what did I say? Yeah, Doug. Uh, the uh, uh, if you know what you're doing with this, it's still, I mean, uh, it is what it is. And I mean, it still can do stuff. So, I mean, I'll be interested to see what he does. Yeah. Uh, so I'll give the guy props. 
And he's got the patience and the know-how to get this stuff done. It's, we, I can exactly. imagine me and you trying to do this. Tenmark also has a new logo. If you remember, his former logo looked oddly reminiscent of something that I might have done in fifth grade on MS Paint. Oh, man, and you're someone, killing his logo. Someone has gone back, and I, and I wish I could give this person credit because this thing looks A-plus, super awesome, mega. Um, I love it. It's it's the ten mark. If you're if you're just listening to the audio, you've got the Amiga ball with ten mark on the inside sitting on top of an Amiga one thousand. Fantastic. Yeah, love it. You're a big one thousand mark now. I I, I am a mark for the one thousand. We should put two zeros behind his name, and it can be you. Ooh. One thousand the ten the one thousand mark. You get it? Ah, <laughs> fantastic oh, jokery you. as always. Oh yeah. The UK Royal Mail, Aaron. Yeah has issued a series of stamps. Uh, yeah, this was the, I remember hearing about this last week. It was a, uh, this was a big deal. And I think they're officially out now. I think I saw some people actually holding them. Yes, yes. This is a series of video game stamps, many of which, if not most, feature the Amiga uh, versions of these games. Uh, this is, of course, being the UK Royal Mail, they want to highlight uh, contributions to the video game scene from British developers. And uh, they've got them all on here. You got your Micro Machines with the Code Masters. In fact, it's double Code Masters love because both Micro Machines and Dizzy are featured on here. Uh, you got Lemmings, Sensible World or Sensible Soccer, Worms, Elite, Populous, and unfortunately, we break the 16-bit trend because they also have Wipeout. And I believe that they have a whole different set of stamps in addition to this with the sort of like um, evolution of Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. you don't, we don't, why do you hate Wipeout so much? That's an awesome game. I'm not, I don't hate it, but I, I don't like the fact, like it just seems, it doesn't it fit was, in. When you look at these screenshots, you've got bunches of pixel art. And then when you throw in a game like Wipeout, which is so far advanced compared to these games, um, it just it doesn't feel like it fits in. So here's the ten million dollar question because I've been pondering this. Okay. Let's say what? Let's say they for some reason they call you up mm -hmm. and they say, "Hello, boat. Which of these stamps need to go, and what would you put in?" Now they're Australian for some reason. Which one of these would you boot? I think I know. And what would your addition be? I know what mine would be. Well, I definitely drop micro machines. Uh, um, you would before wipeout. Well, okay. In terms of like, what's a fun game? I thought you liked Micro Machine. No. Oh. It's 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 quite possibly the most overrated wow. racing game on Grant's the Amiga. Grant's gonna beat you for that. He loves that game. It's horrible because you play the first level and you have a good time, then you play the second level, you can't beat it, and you throw it away. Well, we're not very good. Um, I would probably drop. No, I, of course, you know, if I was going for eight and sixteen bit, if I was going for the classics, yeah, I'd drop Wipeout in a second. And I'd put in, I don't know, advanced ski simulator or something. Like, what would you put in? Manic Miner. Man, oh, yeah. A gross that's oversight true. That's true. with this list. I'd, in fact, I'd that, put in... That's arguably, one, if, that's arguably one of the biggest games ever. I'd put yeah. Manic Miner in place of Wipeout, and I'd put Chucky Egg in, in place Chucky of... Chucky Egg uh, would not in, be the, in, not in the worst of, Yeah, in, in place of but, Micro Machines. Yeah, uh, Manic Miner, you know, Jet Set Willie, those games cannot be... It can't be You overstated. can't overstate the importance. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, they're... You know, I like them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will agree with you. It, it is odd that Wipeout was included. And, and to a certain extent, Tomb Raider. But again, they got to sell stamps. And one thing about those two games is that they know people, younger people are going to be like, know what those are. There is yeah. some connection with the current generation with Wipeout and Tomb Raider, which you're not going to get with any of the rest like, of these frankly, games. Like, frankly, I'm not a big I, I would keep Micro Machines, and I'm not the biggest fan of Populous, as you know, so that would probably be one Yeah, but play. that's Peter Molyneux. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, well, it's, I mean, yes, it is. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it, that that is a, it's the first in a series of, you know, uh, of landmark titles. Micro Machines really started and ended with Micro Machines. There's nothing that it was part of other than the fact that it was connected to an American little car set what, what you need to have fast. you need to have all the shadow of the beast yeah walker yep. yep right you gotta have him blood money blood money menace and, and and then you throw in you throw in it's a nod to the to the germans living in britain Lionheart. i wasn't gonna mention lionheart because of its non-british <laughs> roots but yes i think lionheart should be in there that's just me we should do one of these for every country like we some, should next week we'll do one for germany and we'll do one for like sweden you know, that'd be, that'd be fun. We've got yeah. to do them all. Tons of Swedish Amiga games. There are tons there are. This is something that I wanted to show to you, Aaron, because I know that your uh, CD ribbon for your CD32 is looking a little ragged. No, it's not. Uh, it's this the, is, the board, it looks ragged. This is a DIY replacement yeah. CD ribbon for the CD32. Okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've got to see this. So you can actually do this yourself. You get yourself one of these cables, yeah. right? You kind of spin it around in your hands a couple times. Yeah. 
And then you just apply a couple pieces of cello tape. Uh, you take yourself one of these little uh, screwdrivers that you find in your eyeglass repair kit. Yeah. And you delicately make small incisions upon it. Yeah. And then after you do that for a couple times, you just slot it back in the CD32. Boom, Bob's your uncle. You have a completely functional DIY CD ribbon for the CD32. I will say that ribbon is no big great shakes. You could, you could, you, we used to, we used to have a lot of ribbons like that when I worked for IBM for our te our uh, Genrad testers, mm. and they used to generate these things all the time. It's not that tough. Yeah. What I'd like to see, you want to hear my gimmick here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what's the problem with these? See, see what he did right there. What a back up a minute here. Hold okay. the phone. Okay. What's that? Now, see, that's exactly what I was going to say. Look what he's got there. He's got a uh, he's got a uh, uh, he's got an SD card. See now, what is the going on here? So he's not he's even using the, the CD drive. He's at got all. one of those uh, CD32 like terrible fire things or whatever stuck in it. Terrible fire. Or what, what did I say? That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's cool. Now that's what you need right there. If I knew that I could put one of those in mine, I would probably get one because they're, so they're inexpensive. You too. wouldn't feel uncomfortable creating a DIY replacement CD ribbon for your CD. I would rather have compact flash and never use. See the problem with these CD units. And again, I look at the Dreamcast as a perfect example, and they've done the exact same thing. These, I mean, and the, here we go. It, 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 the purist in me is like, oh, wine, wine, wine. But these CD-ROMs are going to die horribly. They're, it's inevitable, right? And all your discs are going to be crap, mm -hmm. inevitably. You need a digital replacement. Right. And the that particular card is a good choice. Uh, in terms of that cabling, no, they're not that tough to do. You wouldn't have any trouble. If you were like, I, I remember when I had my Tron arcade machine, that thing had cables that were, they were super wide and super ancient and just turned into dust. You know, those are much bigger and weirder. That'd be a little bit more difficult, but a little cable like that wouldn't be that big a deal. Okay, okay. Well, that's cool. He did a good job. Well, this comes to us from CRG, and this just popped up on my YouTube. You know I do random Amiga searches to see what's new and happening in the scene. And I'm going to check him out. And, I, you know, I am going to look back into the, getting my CD32 upgraded. The more I think it's about a shame it, that you use it as little as you do. Well, I mean, it's not... I mean. It's funny. I, I wanted that thing so bad. Yeah, when I, I got, remember when you got it. When I got the twelve hundred, it, it for the most part, it makes the CD thirty two pointless. That's Don't a, tell Figgy that. Well, I'm, they'll I, kill you. If you've got one or the other, you're set. Really, mm. that's a thing. I mean, I'm not bad mouthing it. It's a great time to own Less one. Less units sold worldwide than the Atari Jaguar. Well, pff, big deal. The Jag sold okay. It didn't it wasn't complete crap. <laughs> Um, we do have a new episode of the Amiga Ireland podcast that has been released. Uh, I was thinking that I Ooh, was going to pass this along to you guys before the show, just in case you wanted to do a news segment. But um, they cover all the latest news, including the A122 Limited Edition uh, on sale. This is the, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this more. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and open that yeah, link. I, don't know what the, I, I didn't get to hear anything about hardware from this show. Okay. And I know Ravi mentioned it and even put pictures up, but he didn't explain what they were. Well, we're going to get to that in just okay, a second. Good. But there is, there is a new uh, episode of the Amiga Ireland podcast. If you want your Amiga news delivered to you, in an Irish accent, in a gentle Irish accent, I would recommend you check that out. Mm -hmm. Now, this next video, Aaron, comes to us from Reddit. Have you heard of Reddit? Before? I've heard. I've been there a couple times. Okay. I, for someone that like cussing, you're going to the wrong part of town. I down. know. I know. Now, it's funny because this Ooh. is this is a uh, a video that I discovered. This is somebody who has created a CD32 arcade stick for his Amiga. Okay. Okay. Now, imagine my surprise. When I walk into Amiga Ireland, yeah, and I see this guy and I see this stick in action in person. So this guy did not do what people like me would do, which is to take an already existing box and create a, uh, a, a stick around it. No, he, he, he cut this thing CNC machine. He had the CAD files and everything. He did everything. And then at the end of it, check this out. He totally adapts the mouse for the CD32. That's a trackball. Yeah, with the trackball. And then he puts the Amiga stickers on it. Bam. Nice. Okay. I'm, now, I, without seeing what he did to interface this, I'm going to take a guess. There, there are several ways he could have done it. First of all, the Amiga CD32 does support enough buttons to make this work. I don't have any games actually support all these buttons. There's, I mean, I'm sure there are some. If he has uh, the interface card in there that gives you uh, uh, a... Uh, a mouse port and a, 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 a keyboard port, you know, or of course it already has the way to hit. The, so I'm guessing some of these buttons, 
What did, does he say? What he used for an interface? Did you get this? Did you see the inside of it when you were there? You know, I didn't. I didn't peek on the inside. Um, if it's we, a pretty looking board. I mean, he did a great job. This is woodworking, not my yeah, bag. Yeah, you can you can see that he's got the interface boards here wired up, but I don't I don't know what those are exactly. So I'll, these I'll, these might even be custom jobs. You never know. I doubt it. There's no reason to do a custom job. I'll have to look into this. Yeah, I actually thought about doing this when I first got CD32, something like this, putting in an arcade machine, but. It, the the C thirty two wasn't what I would call the prime candidate for yeah. that at the time. Yeah. But hey, it looks great. And plus, he had a, he was a man on a mission. Right. He was going and that, and I love that. You know that that's I think it looks great. Yeah, yeah. His name is Glenn. Yeah. I had a chance to speak with him briefly to Mega Ireland, and uh, and definitely check out his video. His the name of his channel is C. Oh, this is. CRG, did we talk about CRG? That was the other channel that we did too. So Damn. this hey, guy's been. Is this guy Irish or is he out of? Where's he out of? I believe that he is British. But okay. I could be wrong. I've I been wrong it. about accents before. Man, this guy's tearing it up then. Yeah. You'll definitely yeah. have to add that to the list. Absolutely. All right. And our final story of this week is the, uh, at Amiga Ireland. Big soap. Yeah, big soap. Uh, our boy, Tenmark did an interview live with Trevor Dickinson from the main stage at Amiga Ireland. So uh, if I can sort of set the stage with this, uh, Trevor was actually sitting at the uh, the exact same place that I was for a lot of the time at Amiga Ireland, right in front of the main screen. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Doug actually interviewed him uh, on the, uh, you know, live from the show floor, as it were, him sitting back in, in his home. And, uh, and he was answering questions about the new Amigas that uh, Trevor has been putting out, including the A122. Uh, the A122 is sort of the budget version of the X1000 and the X5000 line, which has recently come out. And, uh, and uh, this, is, this is sort of the low cost new Amiga. Uh, I believe that this is going to sell for around 500 bucks. Mm, that and, is low. Yeah. Okay. And, I was wondering what yeah. low cost really meant. Yeah. And um, and so Trevor answers all kinds of questions. This commanded the attention of a lot of people on the show floor. Uh, I didn't get to see this because uh, there was actually a workshop scheduled against it. I yeah. believe that I was in there with Pixel Vixen during her workshop while this was going on, but I sort of heard it, um, you know, peripherally. And uh, they had some audio problems at the beginning, but yeah. you know, skip ahead about ten or twenty minutes, and, and they jump right into it. And it's it's a very good interview. It runs so. for a while, yeah, you know, almost an hour. I wish you'd gotten that much time. Oh, it'd been great with, with Dave. We'll uh, talk about yeah. that on the Amiga. I, I watched some of this, but I was having some real trouble under, hearing what was going on mm -hmm. with with this one. And really, beginning your interview, there were some sound issues as yeah. well. It got yeah. better. Uh, but that seems like that seemed like they had a lot of sound issues at the event, uh, mm. one and all. So you know better than me. We we'll talk about that later. But yeah, good stuff. Uh, you know, now uh, Trevor was ended up being up there twice, right? Didn't he come back? Oh yeah, in the main event. Yeah, hey, Trevor. Trevor and Dave Pleasant sort of were a constant presence during during the event. You know, going up and down on stage, talking about various endeavors that they're yeah. working on. So always glad to see them over in Athlone. And uh, make sure you check out uh, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast for uh, for this interview and all the other awesome content that Doug puts out. Does Doug have a new haircut or is it just the ear, the headphones? I, it almost looks like he's going for a Clint look. Is that what? That's what I think. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have YouTube stars that we emulate. You know, I emulate Boris Karloff and he emulates Clint. I'm going for Kojak. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Who loves you, baby? I don't know who Kojak really uh, is. I knew it. I knew it. Just move on. He's like Columbo, right? No, he's nothing like Columbo. Columbo was a great but geeky little, like, nothing happening, unkept loser looking guy. Kojak was dressed to the nines, shaved bald with a lollipop. He was a detective. I get Kojak mixed up with who's the guy that throws the fireballs? <laughs> That's it, Proud. I have no idea what you're is talking he, about. Um, he's a guy that throws fireballs and he's Russian. I don't know who you're Kar talking about. Karlov? This is an arcade Karnov. game. Karnov. Karnov doesn't look anything like Kojak. He's got a big old mustache. Really? Yeah. Because in my mind, they sort of... I thought one he was based fire, off the other. by the way. Oh. Yeah. But they, they don't have any connection in no, real life. Though, no, no, right? no. No, no, absolutely not. I okay. believe I believe Tully Savalas is... Was he Sicilian, perhaps? Something like that? Where was Karnov from? Russia. Yeah, Russian, I Makes think. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. That's going to do it for this week's Amiga News, Aaron. I think it's about time that we dive right into this week's main event. Hook. I give you the hook after that last comment. What an idiot. So, let's talk about this wacky game, Hook. Now, 
before we even get into the game, uh, have you seen the film this is based on? We obviously we talked about Peter Pan earlier. This is sort of a wacky, uh, like, uh, secondary tale to Peter Pan. Have you seen this film? I've seen this film. You I've have. seen it all the way through. Now, I have not, but I've, I know the plot. When I had to read up on it and watch some trailers. But just for people at home, why don't you give them the, give them the short version? Okay. So this is, a, this is sort of a um, retelling of the latter days of Peter Pan. So uh, Peter Pan has grown up and become a very successful businessman with a family. And how'd that happen? Since he was a boy that would never age. Well, he came back to he came back to visit Wendy, and on the last time he just stayed. Okay. He just stayed, and um and he he grows up and he's in his mid thirties and he's got a uh, he's got a family. He no longer remembers anything about being Peter Pan. Uh, for reasons that I don't believe are ever entirely explained, Captain Hook magically transports to London and captures uh, uh, Peter's kids. Yeah. So then Tinkerbell um, captures Peter Pan and brings him back to Never Never Land, carrying him on a blanket. I believe she's hotly played by Julia Roberts. She is. Film. Yeah. Hotly played. There's a, there's a sort of a uh, there's sort of a tradition that Tinkerbell is this slinky, leggy, hot fairy. That's a tradition I like to keep. Well, man, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying there it is. Yeah. Disney started that, by yep. the way. Good move. Um, so anyway, Peter Pan has, or he's known as Peter Banning uh, in his adult form. He comes back and he has to sort of relearn uh, all the things that Peter Pan does. And of course, at first, he's very against this. He just wants to get his kids back. But slowly, this is this is sort of a thing where he, he becomes reacquainted with the Lost Boys, some of whom have, have grown old in Neverland at this point, which is a little bit weird. And there's a new Peter Pan guy whose name is Rufio, who's sort of like a pseudo Pan. And there's some there's some tension between him and Robin Williams, by the way, who who is this is an all star cast. Julia Roberts is Tinkerbell. Uh, Robin Williams is Peter Pan. Uh, Shelley Duvall is Hook. Um, what? And there's Shelley Duvall is not Hook. Who's Hook? It's Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, right? Wow. Okay. <laughs> that would have made the movie all... For once, they have a man play Peter Pan and a woman play Hook. And that's what I meant. He was the guy in The Graduate. Wasn't Shelley Duvall the woman in The Graduate? Uh, she was the woman in The Shining, which you okay. haven't seen. She also played Olive Oil. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, it's a I'll great, a great Bob cast. Bob Hoskins is in there as well. Really? Yeah. I, I think he plays that. a police officer or okay. something. I don't know. But anyway, um, Peter Pan... Uh, slowly remembers how to be Peter Pan. He relearns how to fly. He relearns how to crow. He relearns how to talk trash with like seventh grade bathroom language. And um, and then at the end, uh, he defeats Hook. Uh, and Hook is uh, eaten by the crocodile. Uh, that is a stuffed crocodile in the center of town. How does that happen? It's a weird thing that is never fully explained. Okay. Uh, that, that, that is weird. So... Mm. There you go. And I looked into this just to see how the movie did well. Because I remember when this movie came out, I thought to myself, this looks like a dud. Really? Yeah. Because I, well, okay, first of all, I was very young and you were very old. When I wasn't very came old. Out. It came out in 91. Yeah. So how old were you? I was only two years out of high school. Okay. So you're 21 years old. I think that's kind of out of the age range that Hook was looking for. Years old. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I was 10 years old, which okay. was right in their wheelhouse. And here's the thing. I love re. This is a PG film. I love stories that sort of tell a story that's already familiar in a different way. Uh -huh. I think that's really cool, and the the fact that it and it, you you knew the plot coming out of it. I mean, nobody thought, oh, who's this guy? Everybody knew it was Peter Pan from the get go. But it was like, I thought this was a really sweet movie. I thought that the the, the fact that you know Peter Pan relearns how to be Peter Pan. And um, and it was delightful. It was a Spielberg directed film. You know, he doesn't do any crap. Oh yeah, he does. What? If this? No. I read interviews about this where he said he was uneasy about the script. He didn't think the middle held up very well. He thought this was one of his more disappointing films. Really? And the box office also showed. I, I'm not surprised this was not a box this office. This had a $70 million budget. This is 91, mind you. Mm -hmm. Now it returned 300 million. Okay, so world. this was a box office hit. Well, can I finish? It returned 300 million worldwide, but after costs. All the other crap that went down, they said it it, it almost broke even. Out of three hundred million, yeah, where was, did all that other money go? Eight. Hey, listen, I'm not a studio guy. I'm just telling you what the what the wiki said. I don't believe that wiki lies. No, not in this case. 
Uh, and also, uh, like I said, Spielberg said it wasn't. He is not. He's not happy with it. So there you go. He wasn't a big fan of his own movie. Now again, I haven't seen the whole thing. I could. I watched about the first fifteen minutes. I was like, now I've not seen. I've seen this movie once. Yeah. But it's amazing, again, just like The Simpsons, how much you retain after seeing a movie once. And I think that we've become, do you think, this is beyond the realm of the show. Yeah, this is, what's this new? Is, this is something that I ponder uh-uh. as I lay awake at night. Okay. Do you think the fact that we're able to have infinite rewatchability with everything that we watch now, we have told our brains not to remember as much than when we were kids, and we would watch a movie and we would know that we would never see this movie again. Here's the answer. I'm holding up my cell phone. People, and it's not just the cell phone, people don't pay attention to anything. They don't pay attention when they drive. They don't pay attention when they talk to one another. They don't pay attention to what they eat. They don't pay attention to what they watch or hear. They just don't, including me. Now, I also just have faculties that are failing, so that doesn't help. People, nothing hate, I hate more than I'm watching a show and someone's, and, or somebody, I want them to see it or they wanted me to see it, and then they don't watch it. They're, they're pulling out their phone. Mm-hmm. It's like, what are we doing this for? Mm-hmm. You know, people don't pay attention. So I think you're 100% correct, frankly. Uh, I, I uh, think people paid closer attention. You, I mean, 91 was late in the game. When the original few Star Wars came out, like, there was no way to watch this at home for years. Right. And even after the VCR had became pretty much prominent in your house, you couldn't get a copy. Mm-hmm. It was like eight, 70, 80 bucks. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, they weren't released. I mean, and that was not that unusual. So, yeah, it's a different world now where you have instant... Plus, there was less to, to watch, to be honest with you. Uh, and there, so there was also that aspect. So I do agree. I think I think you have a point there uh, with that. Uh, so And this one stuck with you. And hey, as a kid, hey, you know, we all have our guilty pleasures. I don't tell you. I'm not going to sit here and kill the movie. I haven't seen it all. But it didn't do anything for me when I watched it 20 years ago. Sure. You know, I was, I was an idiot. So anyway, let's flash forward to the game and let me know how the movie did. Um <laughs> Someone just said, I'm driving now. There you go. You're part of the problem, Retro Jerry. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, this came out in 92. So this was out uh, a year after the, the film. So uh, you were 21 when, when this, this movie came out. came out. Yeah. When, that, when this game came out. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, this came on four big discs, which that seems about... I mean, there's a pretty expansive intro. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is a... Uh, uh, this is your graphic adventure type deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's only one player. Uh, this was released uh, by... Uh, this was published by Ocean, of course. And they don't have a developer list, but I do know who worked on this. So it was the uh, coder was a guy named Bobby Earl. Uh, now listen, <laughs> we've got to try at least one of these games. He was responsible for a game called Flip It and Magnos. Oh! Water Carriers from Mars. And these are recall. Oh, okay, well we skipped that one, but the it, the first two, yes. All these guys I'm have, all in. So the gr- graphics were done by Don Drake, responsible for Batman and Wizard Wars. W A R Z. Mm-hmm. See, there's another one. Uh, Jack Wickerly, Wickerly, who did Elf, Gold of the Aztecs, and Jurassic Park. You see, there's a. They've all done some movie game. Uh, Kevin Oxlund, who did Anarchy, Orc, and Spellbound. And the music was done, and the music in this is, I'd say, is probably the high point of the game for me. It was done by Dean Evans. Uh, Dean Evans was responsible for a ton of movie game sound, uh, like game soundtracks. Jurassic Park, Lethal Weapon. He did One Step Beyond. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Uh, he did a T, a T2 as mm-hmm. well. Uh, also uh, worked on this was a guy named uh, Keith Tinman. He did, listen to this lineup, Batman, Hudson Hawk. <laughs> he did RoboCop, the all Untouchable. The, all the movie license yeah. games. Well, Ocean. You got to think the, the licensing king. Mm-hmm. They were like, here, do this, do that. Um, this had an Atari ST release and a DOS release. I did read somewhere. I think I wrote it down. Yeah, here it is. This was one of the first smooth scrolling adventure games on the PC. Uh, it used a 256 color tweaked VGA mode. Uh, and all the in-game art came from the Amiga version. So they basically up up the art colors with you know from the 32 to 256. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of weird. So they VGA eyes it. Yeah, I'm assuming I, from everything I could tell, the Amiga was the was the source of all the other sure. versions. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, and and this has the D paint look. I, I, you could tell. I mean, it's great. It looks great. So uh, this game picks up with an elaborate opening uh, sequence. Uh, with exactly as you described, it shows Robin coming home. It uh, it shows the uh, twi- uh, Tinker Bell showing up, telling him his kids have been kidnapped. He has to they, the blanket takes mm-hmm. him to the you know the whole nine yards. 
it's real nice, isn't it? What, what did you think of the opening? The opening, I mean... And the music, too. This game in general does a great job, probably, arguably, inarguably. Mm -hmm. This this is does a better job of portraying the plot of the movie than I think any game I've ever played on any system ever. Well, I mean, it... It, they did a good job. Uh, considering I didn't see the movie, and from watching the opening, I knew what I was supposed to do and right. where I was at. Yeah. So I'll give I'll give the game credit. And again, the opening score, it really kicks off with a nice orchestral sort of thing. It's mm -hmm. real... They did a great job. I'm assuming this music's from the movie that they just kind of made in the... I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not as familiar with the soundtrack, the original soundtrack of Hook, but the music in this game is amazing. So let's talk about the game. So... Uh, again, you play Peter, uh, you know, sort of Peter Pan, who is going around. Now, I can't, when, once you get to this land, you're sort of on your own. Like, I had no idea what I was doing, mm -hmm. as usual. So I spent a couple of hours lung like lumbering around this pirate village. Uh, of course, the obvious comparisons are going to be your Monkey Islands. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no getting away. Right. Uh, the the uh, I will say the graphics, I would say, aren't as good as Monkey Island. The comedy. I mean, I don't think this compares favorably to Monkey Island, but it's not crap. Well, you know, it's, you know you're comparing I, it against one of the all-time greats. Yeah, the, I, I, I sat here and you know I watched the the full playthrough of this game, and I, this is not really a funny game. It's not like Monkey Island. It's not a humorous game. What this game is trying to do is it's trying to portray the movie in video game form because this movie is not like a ha ha funny movie. Right, right. You know? But I mean, they they put a lot of humor in it. I do mean, you think so? Yeah, I thought there was. Give me an example of humor well, I mean, in this. When game. I say humor, I mean it's just like the the way people talked and the, the 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 scenes. They're not. It's not like made to be realistic. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 not as funny. It's not made to be comedy like Monkey Island. It's somewhere in the middle. Okay. You know, uh, the the uh, the interface is interesting. The, I, you've got a it's it, the interface takes up probably Listen, a third of the screen. This is to me this is the, both the strength and the weakness of this game. Okay, I want to hear this. Okay. I want to hear your thought on this. Okay, so this is they they've chosen a different tack right. than the, obviously this is not a scum engine game. No, you've got spyglass, bad breath, drop it down, sack bag, into my hand, out of your hand. Okay. That's what I call them. Uh-huh. Okay? So you call you have dumb nicknames for what they do. Yeah. All right. Okay. Spyglass is search. Yep. Bad breath is talk. Yep. Out of my hand is give. Sack bag inventory. Into my hands, out of my hands means you give it to somebody else. Well, sack bag sort of means like use item, basically. Mm. Now, underneath that, you've got a list of all the stuff you carry. Right. As far as I know, was there a limit to what you could carry? Because I no. can't pick the crap up. Bag of holding. Yeah. Now, but the funny thing about this is there are two pictures on either side of the screen. Yes. One is Captain Hook, and one is uh, is Robin Williams. It looks more like Harry Potter if he was thrust in the chaos engine. He's yeah. got those like, the goggles. <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. It's a very apt comparison. <laughs> and and uh, it, what's funny is when you do something good, like Hook, <laughs> it Hook's face he he gets it. mad. Yeah. He goes. Brr! I love that. I love that part. And it's very pro wrestling. That's you when know? you know. Yeah, it'd be cool if you got a little promo. <laughs> yeah. On it. But you, so you know you've done something right if he gets angry, <laughs> right? Because right. most of the time he just sits down there with the completely immoving. None mm -hmm. of the guys move. Uh, so, uh, what do you do in this game? Well, good question. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I had a lot of luck. I did watch after I gave up. I did watch someone more competent stagger through, but they had trouble too because I didn't want to see the complete solution. So I just watched somebody try to play it. Um, you you basically walk around this town. It's your classic game of this type. Pick this up, take this there, try to figure out what stuff does. Hunt around the screen for picking stuff up. You can pick up a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're picking up, and there, you go to bars, you go to docks, you go to ships, you go to alleys, you know, stores, you know, stuff like that. The first thing I noticed is that you need money. And one of the first hints I got was, was to take this guy and go sell some your gold teeth to this guy and get some in, instant cash. And you, uh, you know, I also got to a bit where, like, I don't know if you, I don't know how far you got in. Did you get to the point where you can? Uh, get the grappling hook and s swing across the screen. So th this was probably the main problem that I had with this game. Yeah. Is that when it, when you try and do something and the guy says, I can't do that, then you think, okay, I can't do that. But this is not the case in this game. In this game, you're like, I can't do that. And then you have to do it again. He's like, I really don't want to do that. And then the third time you ask him to swing, he, then he swings. Yeah. And the only reason that would have frustrated that, me to death. The only reason I knew about that is because I read it. 
I read, I read, the, I had a, I got a, in fact, I've got it right here, actually. You can see I, I printed it out. Mm -hmm, see the thing right here? Mm -hmm. It's, th this game's actually, if you play right through, it's not very long. 35 but minutes. But if you're a dumb guy, you could spend, trust me on this, you could spend days. It's just mm -hmm. like any of these other games that, that I play. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say the puzzles were more or less clever or anything. I will say that the, the, the GUI gets in your way because it does not highlight items that you can pick up. And a lot of the scum engine games, when you when you hover over an item, it'll either light up or it, like it'll show up. It'll like the the text will change or something. Yeah. In this game, you're totally on your own, and that makes things difficult. That was one yeah. part. There's a part where you had to pick this like basically the thing you use for a gravel hook, like that little anchor. Mm -hmm. And to get that, you could barely see it. Right. I, I didn't I didn't see it. And I, again, I had to look at the little dock and tell me what was you know, how to do it. Uh, something else you're going to notice is that uh, t uh, Tinkerbell it hovers around you at all times. It reminded me of the Wii. If you ever played the, the Legend of Zelda game on the Wii, where the little fairy's always near you, because you know that. But it's well, I guess what I'm saying is it's annoying. Right. I didn't lie. I didn't necessarily need Tinkerbell. I mean, listen, if you're a magical fairy, you're gonna hang around with me. Throw, do something. Listen, you know? it's like when Terry Funk fought Jim Cornette in the empty arena. Sometimes it's for pride. Well, no, it's nothing like that. It's sometimes it's annoying, but I guess maybe that happened in the movie. Do you remember if Tinkerbell hung around with yeah, him the whole time? Yeah, it's always hanging around. Okay, there you go. I wish you could move uh, with the arrow keys as opposed to just having to push them where you want to go because this game would work perfectly well if you could move with the arrow keys. You know, and, and that way you could have the mount. But I mean, you don't have to do it. But I would. I kind of like to move with the arrow keys. That's just the way I am. Uh, so, but there's there you go. It's the same thing with Diablo. It's my another problem I have with that game. I don't like to use the mouse to move around if I don't have to. Um, the uh, the sound is good. Uh, the uh, the graphics are pretty good. I mean, I, they're the, not the best I've ever seen, but they look pretty good. I think they do a pretty good job. They convey what's going on uh, pretty well. Uh, but it, it, again, having I, I watched the whole game through after I played it for about two and a half, three hours. Right? So I felt like I gave it a good try. I will say, you know me, I like the less is more approach to a, a UI. And I appreciated the fact that there wasn't a whole lot you had to keep track of. I don't like keeping track of inventory on these things, and I also don't like having a bunch of crazy commands. This gives you a limited amount of commands. It took me a, a while to figure out exactly how to, like at one point you have to put rope on the grappling hook. I didn't exactly know how to do that. And then I didn't exactly know how to throw the grappling hook. I didn't know exactly how to give someone stuff. It's just, sort of, it's just like anything else you have to sort of learn. Mm -hmm. But I picked, I picked it up uh, you know, pr pretty easily. It wasn't that tough. Um, uh, in terms of uh, how fun was it, you know, I probably this is not necessarily my bag, as you know. So I didn't have, I didn't have any more or less fun with it. I had in most of these other games. I, I thought it was okay. I, I'm not real keen on having the huge portraits on it. I think they wasted some screen space because you could have easily had that inventory collapsible, and then taken up about a third less. About a, you know, you have at least another extra you know, one-sixth of screen. Right. But, I mean, it's not a deal-breaker. It's not the worst. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think the puzzles that I figured out on my own were super tough. I mean, what was your assessment? You're more well, into these games a know, lot more than I am. The first thing that you do in this game is you go visit this doctor. Yeah. Okay, and he's got this dripping bone saw with blood on it. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, this was not from the movie Hook. Was there was, there? There he was, wasn't in there? There was no wacky doctor with a with a bone saw in it. Uh, I thought that the, you know the puzzles were fair. I had less problem with the puzzles than I did just like figuring out cuz you're clicking on everything because you don't have any sort of highlight ability here. Uh, you're clicking on everything trying to pick up everything. Yep. You do pick up everything. Yeah. Um and and but you know I think that on the scale of um adventure game puzzles especially from 92 cuz we're getting sort of late in the game with these. Uh I think that things were fair. Um, my biggest problem with this game is that the graphics are very sort of, um, I don't know, uneven. Some things are just represented beautifully, and some things, like your dude, Robin Williams, he has one of the dorkiest walks I've I, seen. You know, I was hoping, you know, you, I'm glad you life. mentioned that. He, watching him walk around, Yeah. It, I mean, you're like... You ever, you ever seen that game? It's one for the consoles. I think it's called Eric the Uneasy or something like that. He's like it's about a dork that's on an adventure, and it's he looks like he's so un abrasively annoying to look at mm -hmm. that you're just like, oh, 
I just want this guy to die. Right. This guy isn't that bad, but he's he's heading that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he does walk like a complete doofus. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't have as much of a problem <laughs> as you do with the uh, with the portraits at the bottom of the screen because I think that. Anytime you have an adventure game, you're always going to only have like the top third of the screen visible and everything else is going to be, you know, on the bottom of the screen. And I like the fact that whenever you do something good, Hook gets mad. I mean, that's, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cute touch. It's a gimmick you know? as far it's, as I'm concerned. It is a gimmick. But gimmicks are what you need to set yourself apart from the others on this game and these kinds of games. Um, this game is presented like more like a LucasArts game than a Sierra game in the fact that you cannot die in this game. You can't really ever mess yourself up to the point where you can't go on and you have to restore. I, I like that a lot. Um, the biggest fault that I think this game has is that it intersperses the background music way too much. Like you, when you are walking around the docks in the opening pirate town, you get nothing but just like the sounds of the sea, ninety-eight point one, and and all in. But whenever you go into the the um, the like the whenever you meet the Lost Boys, there are these themes that come in, the, these musical themes that are just beautiful. And I didn't see these until I started watching the Let's Play, and I was a, I was I was flabbergasted. This is some of the most effective music I've ever seen in an Amiga game. When you are when you are Peter and you are remembering how to fly and you remember your happy memory, there is this swelling that happens. That is a great and scene. It, yeah. And it's 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 so affecting. And I don't know that I've ever seen an Amiga game that does it so well. And it's such a shame because there are so few people that probably saw it because they got frustrated <laughs> earlier in the game or whatever. But I just wish that they would have just you know, share the love, you know, give me, a, give me a jaunty pirate tune in the pirate town, you know, don't give me just, you know, the ocean waves and things like that. This is, I'm not going to lie to you. This is probably, you know, my favorite music in any game that we've done. This is episode 234. <laughs> I, you know, this takes all of the things that I watch, and we'll talk about this in the Amiga Ireland bonus episode, but we watched a guy do a, a seminar on Pro Tracker, and this was like the opposite of all of that awful Euro dance trash. There we go. This was so symphonic and so emotional and so beautiful, and I wanted it to go on, and it does. But the problem is, is that you just don't get any of that in the early game. Well, the the music in this, it's it's. Uh, it reminds me of some of the uh, Lucas. It, it it comes in at pivotal points. Like there's there's music before that Lost Boys part. There's other. It, it comes in at kind of like when you when you first meet Hook, you get some. You get a little. You go. Well, I'm just saying, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good yeah, well, it's, though. Uh, I, I do. I will say there's a there's a again not seeing the film. Uh, there's a moment when uh, and I, when I was watching this that uh, uh, when Peter actually finds out who he is and they there's like a flashback scene. And the music comes in, and then he starts to rise up in the air. It was very, it was very yeah. stirring. And I'd here's say. the thing: you don't have to watch the film because this gives you every single plot point. I mean, it's fantastic. This is the best adaptation of a video game or of a movie I've ever seen in a video game in terms of conveying the plot. This does it better than any other one. Well, I, I haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen. We haven't played a ton of movie games. We played a ton of movie games. Well, I mean, there's plenty more out there. I guess what I'm you, saying. Do you think Hudson Hawk is going to give you a better? Uh, you glimpse into I haven't Bruce seen that either, mind. to be honest with you. So I have to put on the list. Uh, but I think I, I, this is okay. I, I know, I'll tell you this. Uh, I think this is a game that people would see those scenes, and I think it, that people could get there. Mm -hmm. I think if given uh, uh, if I had the gumption, and this was my bag, I could have probably gotten at least to the to the uh, you know island. It wasn't that tough. I was about halfway there when I when I gave up. Uh, but I do like the music. I, again, I, I liked when it came in. I think part of the reason that it had such a good effect is that they did use it sparingly. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, having something kicking around wouldn't be the worst idea. Uh, but it's okay. Like I said, I, I, I'm not going to give this game some kind of ringing endorsement. But I think it's... it's they. I mean, for a movie adaptation, it's better than most. Because they actually sort of kind of cared and sort of kind of put something together that was sort of kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And it also glorified the film as opposed to making a, uh, some kind of like, uh, you know, like run around and jump game. Yeah. And I know the console versions of this are totally different. Totally different and totally awful. Have, oh, have you played those? I was going to I, I think I rented Hook from the old uh, Video Madness, which I think was over at where Dunlap's Gun and Pawn is now. Yeah. And you didn't like them? Do you didn't recall like anything it. about them? Horrible. Yeah. 
you know, a couple of little uh, amusing things that I dug up on this uh, just from a couple of different websites. Uh, the Amiga version of this game... Uh, Movie Town. That's what it was, yeah. not Video Madness. Video uh, Madness was in Winfield. The Amiga version of this game was had a, a copy protection on it. And it was they say it was a variant of the Nor Rob Northern copy lock routine. Now get this. So if this thing failed a second protection check, uh, it would cause an item that's important to the game, it says here a mug, to disappear. Really? And so you couldn't actually go any further without that mug in wow. the game. So it was brutal. One of those brutal. Jerk jerk protection. Yeah. So that's always good for, that's always good for a laugh. Uh, and it was one. It was. It made this game uh, uh, initially difficult to crack. But for the, I mean, people they thought they'd cracked it, but then mm -hmm. they looked like jerks. And that did happen occasionally. I had. I ran into some games that I had copies of that they would have handicapped in some way, and you were pretty much screwed. Something else I thought was interesting on this was that the German version uh, didn't translate properly, and so none of the special German characters got translated. You know, like the A with the two dots, the mm -hmm. O with the two dots. The old this. umlaut. So uh, the, any of the dialogue that had those characters in it were, were got screwed up. Mm. So I guess if you have the German version of this, you're SOL. So I, that was kind of neat. So and one other thing I found is as a wacky cheat, uh, if you go to the bait and tackle shop, there's a mug. There's, there's mugs everywhere in this game. But there's a mug next to a candle. If you keep going, I wish I'd known this when I was playing. If you keep repeating the pickup on that space, you get every item in the, that you need to beat the game. Really? Wow. <laughs> Court of the cheat. So someone should give give that one a shot. I thought that was pretty amusing. Um, <clears throat> I looked this up, see how it did review wise, Boaster. Uh, you know something else I was going to mention. This there was the, the uh, this came out on the C sixty four, but not as this. The C sixty four got the platformer version. Uh, kind of weird. The bad version. You think the C sixty four could have pulled off some sort of graphical adventure game like that? I think it would. I mean, it could have, but yeah. I think it would have been hard to port. You would have to rewrite it from the beginning. So. Anyway, Lemon, the people over at Lemon give this a <clears throat> respectable 7.32. Mm -hmm. um, Amiga Action uh, gave this a 72. Uh, Amiga Format a 48%. They dropped a hammer. Amiga Magazine gave this a 7 out of 10. Amiga Mania, brother, gave this a uh, 78%. Amiga Power, 84%. Uh, AUI gave it 87, CU Amiga gave it a 64, and the one gave it an 84. Those are sort of all over the map between sort of the B, C level down into the F zone. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that, that's weird, you know. I'm sure some of these docked it severely on the on the time it took to finish it because if you're a hardcore hook fan, if you're no, if you're a hardcore graphic adventure person. I mean, real super good at them. You could smoke this game pretty quick, yeah. probably. And so, when you get a game like this and on four discs and you finish it in under an hour, not good. Well, okay. But I mean, that's I, what I, 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 I want to push that. back a little bit okay. because Monkey Island. You know, if you look at the the uh, the Let's Plays of Monkey Island, that the they're Iron long. Yeah, you know, they're like two and a half hours yeah. long. However, Monkey Island Two, how many discs? I don't know. It was hundreds. Of eleven. <laughs> yeah. Eleven discs. Yeah. So if you think about it, eleven discs is two and a half hours. Four discs at thirty-five minutes. I mean, that's that's fair. I was wondering what this got released at price-wise, and I, I I didn't see any. I didn't find the price it readily, uh, but I'm wondering if this sold for. I mean, when you've got a movie game again, the, having not seen the film, this seems to tell a complete story. But you know, you can make these games as long or as short as you want. So you know, I, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kill it for that. And also, again, if you watch these playthroughs, if you're just a schlep like me, it's not you're not. I, I sat around for two and a half hours laboring to get a, probably a third of the way through. So, but I mean, if you're a real good hand, you could probably get through it pretty quick. I looked this up on eBay, boat. Just well, before you go oh, on sorry, to the go eBay, we got, we got a couple of, uh, user reviews. All right, here. go ahead. Okay. Whoa, uh, Chris Full says hook review. At first, I hated it as I hate the film. And I put in a few more hours in. It's a mild cheddar of the point-and-click world. Sure, it's a cheese, but it's bland, boring, and there's so much better cheese available. So why spend your time playing this? Six out of ten. Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky, writes, Point-and-click adventure. Comical pirates. Is this deja vu? This game is not a patch on its LucasArts competitors. However, point-and-click adventures are a guilty pleasure of mine, and I do still have an affection for this game. The puzzles and dialogues are quirky and entertaining. The game itself is addictive and hard to put down. On the downside, the commands are limited and having Tinkerpell buzzing around your head all the time can get very annoying. 
I'm with Hermskill on that seven out of ten, and also I'm with Hermskill and Tinkerbell. Annoying. I didn't do it for me. No. I, that's one thing I would have gotten. But right listen, out. listen. Here's what I got out of it. All okay. Right. Yeah. You got a hook. Yep. Okay. You got the movie. Okay. The hook brings you back. It does. As it were. It yeah. does. With the. Remember that song? The extremely long harmonica solo. Yeah. Great. Song. Um. So the. Uh, I really thought that like okay for example okay you got. Rufio, remember yeah. that classic scene where he grabs the hook from Dustin Hoffman? Yeah. And he says the immortal words, looky, looky, I've got hooky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used to say that every day when I was growing up. And Those I, are immortal words. I would, I, would, I would play hook with my brother. Real. Okay. And like he would pretend like he had a hook and I would take his finger and twist it off. Yeah. And then I would say, looky, looky, I've got hooky. Did you really do this? And then I would crow, because Peter Pan knows how to crow. Do you know how to crow? I don't. Caw, caw, caw! Very good. Yeah. You surely, this isn't real. You didn't actually play this game in, at your house. No, I never played this okay, game. Okay, thank God. But, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, talking about I would have, actual pretending to be hooked. Yeah, part. yeah. This you, is, had a, you, had a child, you had a childhood that was beautiful and innocent. It was, know? it was. And when I watched, did you ever find, did you ever watch the movie um, Finding Neverland? Do you no, remember this? No, no, I never watched that. Okay, this was an ex extremely like sappy retelling of like the uh, the the um, J M Barrie's growing up in rural England in oh, the yeah. early part of it. You know, it's great to be an Englishman in 1910. Yeah, King Edward's on the throne. It's the age of men. Yeah. Okay. And um and you know him growing up in in, in like there was like this mean old lady that that like grabbed a, like a clothes hanger and it had a hook on it and he was like oh hook Captain Hook. That's where they got the and idea. So, yeah, that's where they got the idea. Who knew? Yeah, and then at the end, everybody. What dies. if she? What if she grabbed a clothespin? Then what would happen? Mm. Then you got problems. You don't want to know. Um, uh, before we move on, eBay. Believe it or not, this game goes for some bucks. Now it's all over the map. I'll admit that. In the U.S., if you want to get one, two hundred U.S. dollar bills. Wow. Or best offer. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, so, huh? Yeah. <laughs> then you've got uh, in in the UK, of course, you've got everything from seventeen bucks sold. to people were selling these for fifty, sixty, seventy, ninety bucks. It was all so over the map. This is an expensive game, is what you're saying? Well, it could be, or it could not be. To be completely honest with you, it depends on your uh, uh, it depends on your uh, ability to buy it at the right time. Mm. You know. Mm. So there you go. Mm. Video time, Boat? Video time. I don't know what that means. Our videos time. Oh, okay. Um, so we did have a lot going on on the old YouTube channel this week. Um, probably the thing we should mention first is the arcade tour. You want to talk well, about that? That's the first thing we're going to mention? That's the only thing that was important that happened. Um, we, you know, this is, we've released Spin 10 of the Thanks for Giving Marathon all the way back in, in on Thanksgiving. Day mm -hmm. of Thanksgiving. And in this one, we did we, we actually shot a little, uh, just a little tour of the arcade. It had to be a little tour. It's a little arcade. And we stuck that in there as well. So if you, and we also look at games from Micropro, specifically one game, at 15 Strike Eagle, two different versions of it. So, but the best thing is that you give an a tour of the arcade. That's right. It's a very, it's a very small, it's a, it's a, we get into a lot of stories and stuff. But yeah, our arcade's not very big. But yeah, we look over some stuff. So we, we had a good time filming it. You know, we thought it'd be fun to put in there. Yeah. Are you is... mocking our arcade tour? I can't tell. Listen, with you. listen. All right. Next up, we've got a one of the first reports from Amiga Ireland. Wow. I Ireland's looking rough. <laughs> this was uh, <laughs> my buddy. His name is Clear Coss. Clear Coss. Wow. Say that again. Clear cost. Man, that's okay. okay. Yeah, I he's like it. He's from Greece. Oh, okay. Okay. And he's pretty much universally regarded as the world's most light wave 3D master. Blue and I watch this. I mean, <laughs> Clear Cost yeah. travels around the globe and he derives his income solely from doing light wave 3D presentations at various Amiga events. You've got to be joking. This is how he earns. That's got to be This is how he earns his money. You're kidding me. How yeah. many Amiga events would you have to speak at? And, so, and so what he does is he takes his logo, yeah. which is Mwabdib. Yeah. Okay. And Mwabdib, he takes that and then he morphs it into various things and then he shines light on it because that's the thing. One of the things that I learned by attending this uh, this seminar is that the rendering time is not so much the 3D 
it's when you start adding the lighting effects, the, okay. the, the, the render time rally. And the first thing he says is, if you're trying to do this on any kind of regular Amiga, you're out of luck. Just get a PC and fire up an emulator and you're uh -huh. good to go. Okay. I don't remember that part of yeah. him saying that. He basically buries Amiga hardware right remember. away. So he, he clearly he doesn't want to continue to earn a career in the Amiga <laughs> convention <laughs> circuit. I think he might be shilling for vampires. I'm not sure. You know, when we watched this, a, a room a room full of us, I got to watch some of it, and we, and basically the 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 conversation was something along the lines of what? How the heck? What? Mm -hmm. Nope. Too hard for whoa? What the? Yeah. Yeah. And then we all just gave up and just sat there with our drooling on the monitor. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, Mwabdib does a, f a fantastic job, yeah. uh, you know, going through, putting people through their paces on the old Lightwave 3D. He's got the skills 3D. on that. Yeah, Absolutely. it's kind of neat to see that. I, again, I'm, I've heard a Lightwave. I know sort of what it does, but to see a dude actually use it was kind of cool. You want to talk about last week's uh, Iris Sinclair, a oh, ZX Spectrum podcast? Man, we... we we went at it, buddy. So, you know, we, we've covered... It seems like I've covered Rainbow Islands a hundred times. It always comes up. It's always connected to other games. It just keeps coming up. I will have it's to like tell you... It's like a bad you, penny. Did you get to try the Specky version? I have not played the Specky version of It this. was solid gold money, brother, uh, in terms of uh, being like it Rainbow It looks very Island. good. It looks like you're in Toyland right it's, now. Well, the funny thing about it is, of course, the... the the, you've got the color clash issue and the fact that the rainbows are monochrome. It's kind of amusing, but mm -hmm. it plays well. The, does that mean we're good at it? No. And it was, I will say it was refreshing to be on the show with someone who also doesn't like it because neither one of us were big fans of Rainbow Islands. But it was it plays well. I can't badmouth it. And play, it's very much like the arcade. I, I loaded up the arcade version and played it uh, to compare them, you know. And, hey, it, it's good. Control is good. It's just like a lot of Spectrum games. Control is good. Look sharp, you know. You just have to deal with the color issue. I had a habit of losing stuff in the color clash, but I have that a lot, you know. Uh, but um, it was it was a good solid, uh, good solid game. Here's what I liked about this episode. First of all, Brent and Ty. Yeah. First time I've ever seen Brent and Ty except his wedding. Yeah. And you that was guys, my tie, by the way, you guys with your really affecting version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow at the end. Yeah. Well, I you mean, know, I was I was depressed. I'm not an emotional man. Yeah. But I teared up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're thinking about working the convention circuit with that gig. Yeah. You if and Clear Cost could if, go if out. Clip Blob could yeah. go out. I figured me and him have a shot. And we wouldn't even badmouth the stock Amiga. You know, no, we had a good time. Uh, we had a, we had a fun time. I, I had to do a lot of work to convert all the graphics and stuff over to my system. But we had a good time doing it. So, but yeah, I recommend it. I mean, if you're in the Rainbow Island, this is your baby right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have uh, an interview that I did uh, over on the, on the main what stage. What was her name? Hey, she she was not a president of Amiga Ireland, oddly enough. Go on, Ricky, chime in. Um, we did. Uh, I I got a chance to briefly sit down with the one and only Dave Haney, and uh, this yes, thing this I, thing was beset from the beginning yes, with, with the audio trouble. It was reminding me very resplendent of the Amigos of show. Um, so, uh, but we did get a chance to sit down and have a, a chat for around 36 minutes. Uh, we talked about uh, Dave's early days with the Exidy Sorcerer. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I, and he also mentioned the uh, uh, the chipset from the Commodore 16. So we just discussed an ARG, right? And I actually knew what was going on. I was so proud of myself. I thought about throwing in a plug for ARG <laughs> in there, but yes. I, I somehow uh, you know problem, caught off the impulse. So what happened here? Of course, your audio, but. The problem with this interview is just right. I mean, it was it, it, you got? I, I bet there's a lot of stuff he doesn't talk about that often because you went way back, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, this is great. And when he started really getting the Amiga stuff, it was over. Yeah, it's like, burr, burr, yeah. Burr. Well, I had you know, whenever I interview anybody in my mind, I had the whole structure in my head. Yeah, and and so I always it's a slow burn up to the climax, and I I was still way way back. I was 25 percent of the way where yeah. I wanted to be. Did, so did they? Did did you know that you were under the gun for time? No, like that? I had no idea. How did you know? Because I mean, you abruptly ended so, up like Erla, Erla came into my field of view and went. Oh man! And so that was. We're gonna it. get into that more during the special. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. during the Amiga Ireland report. I, I also mentioned uh, on me and Brent talked about it, that Dave, if if I had a head of hair, like a full head of hair, I would be him now. That's that, how I would, you do I, would have, it. I would have that mustache. He looks what I would look like if I had mm. hair. So I'm proud of him. I yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna absolutely. try to get with that guy one of these days. Oh. I went. I sent him a message on Facebook. I think he needs some some cool down time. Yeah. He had a much rougher trip than I did. He left Athlone at two a.m. to catch a four a.m. flight back man, to the states. He's a, so. he, hey, he's a, he's a, he's a heck of a man. Yeah. And finally, Aaron, last week you and Brent took on the mantle of the Amigos. That's and, right. And soldiered on without me. Much like after I die, you guys will Look continue at that. on. Of all the pictures. Yeah. 
<laughs> you guys covered a game that, you know, we've done, this was episode 233, we had not done a wrestling game on the Amiga since I believe episode 2, which I believe was uh, Micro Pros Wrestling. That's a, it's amazing. Did we never, we never covered European Rampage? No, no. Amazing. So I was so looking forward to doing WrestleMania. Oh, sorry. But at the same time, I was glad you and Brent to cover it because you guys definitely are the people that, that know wrestling games. Well, Brent doesn't know Jack Squad about wrestling, but... Uh, uh, he knows garbage when he plays it, <laughs> and by God, this is garbage. It was a real letdown, but we, we tried to have as much fun as you could possibly have with this game. And of course, I got to talk about wrestling for a long time to bore all the listeners, but I, I, we had a fun we had fun with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make sure if you're listening to the last week's episode, stay till the end because there's a there's a great promo that is cut at the very very end. <laughs> we were we were screwing around. We did that for the live chat, which we couldn't have, so that was a real bummer. <laughs> but that's the way it goes. All right, Aaron, as we come to a close here, uh, I do want to thank all the fine folks here on Twitch.tv who have tuned in to watch this live. Pixels at Dawn, wielding the mod sword of doom. Ooh. Yeah, he's here with us. Of course, Edvin, cozily ensconced in the man cave. He's poured himself a brew or two. Cozily ensconced. Yes. Uh, Picard 2010 is with us, uh, as always. Uh, we got Ricky DeRocher, go to go sub. Thank you again for that uh, Twitch Prime subscription. And uh, that reminds me, if you are a Twitch or if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber and you would like to support us, uh, you can you get one free Twitch subscription a month if you just log into Twitch.tv. Uh, you can uh, sub to the Amigos Retro Gaming channel and, and help us out. Uh, we've also got. Actually, I think that's it. I mean, it's a kind of a Ricky Drusher, L. Curtis, Curtis B. Is here. Is a little bit, yeah. What up, Curtis? But, uh, but yeah, kind of a thin, thin chat as we come back after a couple weeks off. I understand, guys. But uh, yeah, feel free to watch us live every Friday night around five thirty Eastern time. Uh, we'd love to have you over at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. And it's been, it seems like it's been forever, Aaron. Um, our last Patreon song challenge, which I believe was like three weeks oh, ago. Oh gosh, I can have no idea. So uh, we only had one winner, and it was Edvin Helen. Oh, wait a minute. It was Edvin. Who's the? Isn't there someone that almost perennially wins and then gives us little facts about yeah, the song? Yeah, Billy. Oh my gosh, he's not. Is he? He's not in here tonight, is he? Yeah, and is so pa is Pack in here? Pack is not in here. He did not get this one. Edvin sent me a message because our internet went down and his subject line was, what's going on? I can only uh, assume that he meant to answer the uh, Patreon song, which actually happened after he sent that message, which was Marvin Gaye, What's Going On. Was it? It was. That's amazing. Yeah. Good job, Edvin. So You're Edvin, some kind of weird savant. He is. He's a very savantish savant. All right. So... We come to this week's Patreon song challenge. I hope this song's more upbeat than that one. And peppy. You don't you don't like uh you don't I'm just saying. Okay. It looks like it, it sounds like you're slowly melting. Is the reason I mentioned that. Because if you, so if we're gonna go do a love ballad, I'm gonna go out for a pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So if you know the answer to this week's Patreon song challenge, feel free to send me an email at John at AmigosPodcast.com. You sound like one of those midnight DJs. I am a midnight it's DJ. It's 1.33 a.m. here on the on the Judge. Did you ever listen to Delilah? Ooh, Delilah. That song? No. Oh. Delilah. She was on V100, like, late nights. Listen, I don't know. They're all the same, man. Are they? I was in the biz. I've met all these people. Really? They're all the same. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe you can introduce me when we go up to chords. Listen, you need to get somewhere first. Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Zorg Love, Iron Wolf, Ryorg, Vin Goodness, and Terry Howard, Reflection, Simon Ledge, Kevin Crispy, Kilobytes, and Caffeine, Mike W. Decker, Three Point, Gary, Heather Free, Lunch, Gate, Fox, David, Pick for Cameron, and Armstrong, Andrew Jones, Lobsterminator, 10 Minute and Amiga Retro, Retro Cask, Verdon, Quinn, Retro Man Cave, Drim, Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Letter, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Heller, Moore, and Craig, Sean, so colon, 419, Bach, Bid, Roland, Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe, the Zombie, 
Joe Cook, Leaf Kellan, Alan Kebab, Jack Cote, Level Lord, John Marshall Matthew, Pear, Ron, Ricky De Rocha, Ricky De, Keepy Dead Boy, I think it's CTZ, The Slow Norse, Stefan Sorg, Mortensen, Edmund Helen, Blender 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abba, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham W. Vepke, Thane Denson, I'd about us be, Oh, Prize Return Vintage, Gary Hucker C. Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Doug Sauls, Tape from the Crib, Josh Dan and Bradley, Jodas Rulo, T H E Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Hundred said, Ken Yo Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Cole, Jason Warren's Pixels of Dawn, and Kyle Bjorn Barman. Man, that, that was just. That was the, that was low down. That's bad. how I break it down. That you broke it down. You broke yeah. me down yeah. mentally. Yeah, Aaron. Next week, we're going to be playing this. <laughs> no, is a, this, don't talk about that. This next is a, week. this is a game that's near and dear to you. Your, your this so, is named after you. Naughty ones. Yeah, naughty ones. It's about people that grew up in the early two thousands. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. It's not. Well, it could be. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Give me a break. All right. So, thank you all so much for listening. You always demite yourself. Hey, for that's how I do it. <laughs> call, that's a, call me Eric Clapton. No. Um, we that's will an insult, Eric Clapton, in a huge way. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. And until then, adios. Yeah. So, I was only recording like the last 30 minutes of that because for some reason when I started the show, I didn't hit record. So, but we've got it all on the stream. Luckily, the internet held up. If the internet didn't hold up, we would have been screwed. Listen, no more Jaeger for you. No, I'm filling and up no with more, the Jaeger. No more water for you I'm, either. I'm filling up with both. First no, of all, no. I, I've got it empty. You, you, what the hell? <laughs> Listen, I knew that song. That's yeah. what makes. That's what disturbs me the most. It's because of my endearing rendition. I never thought I could say this, but you've actually, you've actually soiled that song and group. I am that song. No, dude. you're not. Listen. Oh, my God. You have a cast the net showed up your butt? Because that sound you made right there, that can't be normal. Whoa! Folks, I wish you could see what I'm looking at here. Oh. Oh, boy. This Spectrum show is going to be tough. Okay. Did anyone in here play Hook, by the way? I guess I should mention that. I mean, re like, this week. Did anybody give it a shot? We <laughs> the, <laughs> the, trust me, Ray. The Irish trip just occurred as he was going to the bathroom. Mitsuyama. That's cool. I know the song. Surely everyone in the group knows the song. I mean, such as it was. Yeah. Although I have to say, for about the first 30 seconds, I thought he was having some sort of fit. I had no idea what was going on. Then, I, then I, the chorus kicked in, thank God. You own, you own Hook, dude? Silver Streak, what's up, dude? Yeah. You okay in there, Boat? You drinking some of your own mix tonight, Edwin? All right, I'm going to run over here real quick, guys. We'll be back in two shakes. Stick around. We're going to cover this crazy, uh, this crazy uh, spectrum game. But I'm going to let me let me get out real quick. Well, wait, I'm not leaving yet. No, I mean I just want to use their well, facilities. I'm not, I'm not. I gotta. Yeah, but I'm not going upstairs. Is my point. I'm going to go. If I can get this microphone off. You know, Boat had me put these mics up here. You see where this, look at this thing. All right. Could you tell any difference, anybody? All right, thank you, Mitsu, Mitsuyama. Oh. Hey, listen, I love them too, uh, dude. So don't feel bad. <laughs> I, but now I feel bad because you suggested two of them. So they, he did soil them. All right, I'll be right back. I'm just going to be back in two seconds. Just hang loose. Yeah, come on down, boat. 
You were a lot steadier on the stairs than you were walking down the hall here. Uh, stairs are my bag. I'm glad to hear that, Frodo. Um, this is uh, something I, I picked up from Stephen Fletcher, um, who was the uh, guy behind the uh, Commodore story, that uh, documentary film that came out. He was like, yeah, just put the lav right there on the collar. You know, you put it right up next. And I was always worried that, like, my larynx would rub up against it. But it turns out that uh, that's really the way to go because you get the least amount of bleed through um, because you're simultaneously closer to your voice and further away from the other guy. So uh, I'm glad it's working out. Evan, what are you drinking tonight in the man cave? Go to go sub. You're exactly right. You were the you were the inspiration behind that 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 pick. Look at that. You sent me a cold one right here. Yeah, I did. Look at that. Yeah. I moved those bottles, by the way. What bottles? They're gonna get stomped. Oh, okay. IPA homebrew. Homebrew as in home uh, brewed by you, Edvin. Oh, new baby IPA. What city in Norway is that coming out of? Five feet from you. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. Have you ever think about opening up your own brewery? I mean, you're in sort of a rural area. I mean, there can't be that many like brew pubs near you. Lemon flavored water. Yeah. Mm. That's sort of what Diet Citrus Drop Extreme is. Right there, baby. You know, that probably sells for big bucks overseas because it's so sort of obscure. Endorsed by me. We should get yeah. a gig with them. We should. Thanks, Jackie. I appreciate that. Jackie, the best you're so fine. The, be the best compliment you could ever give me is to say, tell me that the podcast sounds good. If you say that, that is like, that means the world. What if you said, you're so good looking? Well, people tell me that all the time. Do they? It gets old. That's the way we spell it over here, Pixels. We don't have time to put the E in front. <laughs> We're sort of against vowels. <laughs> we don't do that. Well, it's got other vowels in it, but we don't have time. <laughs> you know, when you look at it, spelled out like that, you sort of feel like a jerk. You know? Because there's only one letter, and the letter's already appeared two other times. It's true. It's true. All right, we're going to switch scenes here. You ready? Yeah. Blue screen. Oh! Look, we made it. We made it over. Did you hit record this time? I will try to hit record. It's important that you I hit record this time. You know how bad that could have been? That's you pulled a me. You know, know. what Brent would have done to me? Well, what would he have done? He would have pounded me in the sand. Let me ask you a question. How many uh, episodes has Brent produced on his computer of any show ever? A couple. Remember the don't don't you remember classical gas? Our, me and Bridge. Okay, so that was literally like seven years ago. Okay. It's longer ago than that. No, I think it was seven years was ago. Because we've been doing the show five years. I think it was two years before then. <laughs> That's it, it was a quota, Curtis. Curtis, you're in good form tonight, my friend. <laughs> He's had a bunch of good ones. It's spectrum time, baby. These guys will say stuff in the chat when we're talking, and I just want to—I want to acknowledge their hilarity. You should acknowledge there. their hilarity. You know? That's what I do. I love that stuff. Oh, Watch this. Spots. Thank you. We're going to do. A we're going to do a little bit of this. Okay, maybe not that. But you're wrecking the whole world with your no. body. Well, I, it's hard. Did you put? You didn't put more Jägermeister in that cup, did you? No. Okay, thank There's God. There's definitely not as much Jägermeister in here. Okay, good. Edwin, you're doing the right thing, my friend. And. We appreciate that retro spot. Well, Boat had a real good time with all the boys over there. I'm glad. That, the streams were good. But I, I got to see all of them, but I watched a lot of them. I live. will say that the audio quality and the video quality has much improved this year over last also, year. Also, you hit record on the on the one interview, yep. which I haven't got to hear that one yet either. And uh, I will say that having picks at my side is sort of a, my technical analyst. 
was helpful. You know, they shouted out the whole Amigos gang. They said, you guys well, saved the day. You know, Edvin was in, he was in yeah. there. He was helping out. Everybody, everybody was doing their you part. You had a, a, quite a crew over there. Yeah. We'll talk about this more on the big, oh, on yeah. the main event. On, so on the main event. Let's, get, let's see. Can you hold it together here for Carrier Command? I'm Listen, gonna, man. I'm going to need to lean on you. Lean on, boat. You know, it's funny. He can't walk straight. When I was sitting in the Bailey, yeah. the pub yeah. there with the old guy, the 85-year-old Irishman, yeah. and Seamus, the barkeep. Yeah. And that song came on the radio. Yeah. And I said, listen, you want to hear something interesting? That song was written by a guy from West Virginia. And they said, oh, really? What was his name? And I looked him in the eye and I said, I don't know. And they just they just walked away. Lean on Me was written by a guy from West Virginia? Yeah, Bill Withers. I couldn't think of it. I know he wrote time. that. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Did he do the first original version? Yeah. He, well, he wrote the song. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't know it was. I didn't know that was a cover. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Good. Good job, Boat. All right. Yeah, you got that right, Curtis. All right, let's fire it up. Okay. Fire it up. We got to do the thing with the stuff. Bring the noise. Okay. Here we go with a little bit of. Mm. Oh, you know my hot keys are not working anymore. They're cold. Support our Sinclair and listen ad free. Go to Patreon.com/slash Our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC Future from the Future Was 8Bit.com. Quit waiting on tapes and fooling around with wave files, and load your games instantly with the Div MMC Future, a jumperless, switchless SD storage solution for all ZX Spectrums, from the 16K all the way to the plus three. Get yours today at thefuturewas8bit.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. I'm Aaron, Jazz Hands Boat. Aaron, yeah. this evening we're gonna be discussing Carrier Command. Mm -hmm. Now, It's not I, what I thought it was. I would like to know if you've ever been on an aircraft carrier. I have, I have been on an aircraft carrier. Tell me about it. Um, I'm trying to think which, I've been on an aircraft carrier and a destroyer. I'm trying to think which is which. I think the aircraft carrier... Well, the aircraft carrier is the one that carries the aircraft. Well, I know which the difference is the boats. I'm trying to think which the names are different. I've been to a couple of different ones. But yes, I've been to an aircraft carrier. It was awesome. Awesome and huge. The decks go on forever. The under part of this thing was amazing. The, everything about it was super cool. Yeah. If you were going to have a job on an aircraft carrier, what job would you want? I should never have that. That should never be something I do <laughs> because that would be the end of that. No, you don't want that. I'll tell you one thing. To, you can understand why people in the Navy are a special bunch, all right? And special men are selected. I'll tell you why, okay? There's a lot of walking and stair uh, climbing mm -hmm. and yep. ladder climbing. Yeah, ladder right? climbing. Secondly, uh, the port, the, the uh, places you go through, uh, the doors and also, they're, you can't be real huge. They're not built for big guys. Now, of True. course, the ones I were on were, are old, World War II era. Yeah, back then people were like 5'4 max. Right. Uh, the, and all the seating and stuff was not made for a large, and that's not like I'm some kind of huge, girthy monster. No, your yeah. average height for an American, well, no. average girth. Average height is not, I think I'm a little hot. I think you are, you're, is, you're yeah. a tall man. Oh, would you stop? But anyway, uh, it was, uh, the job I would like to have would probably be, Whoever, I'd probably cook, maybe mailroom attendant, something like that. Something that's pretty much nondescript, you know. I'd want the flag man. The flag man? Yeah, the guy that, that controls when the aircraft take off. They give him one of these, and yeah. they give him one of those. But you have to know what that stuff means. You can't I don't know that they actually know what that oh, means. Oh, that, that's, that's some way they communicate in between ships. Do you think they're, they're actually, that, that corresponds to anything, or do you think that they just do it just, for, you know, like a little show? It's like the last little bit of entertainment before the pilot takes off. You know something I heard this week? It's funny, which is, I just popped into my head. Uh, I believe, I'm trying to think with this gentleman, which ship he was on. There's a gentleman that's being honored. Uh, he's an African-American fellow, and he was at the Battle of Pearl Harbor, the attack at Pearl Harbor. Right. If you're not familiar with it, World War II. December 7th, 1941. Japanese attacked our, our uh, fleet at it's Pearl Harbor. the day Harbor, before John Lennon was shot. And... Uh, Blew a bunch of ships up. Anyway, crazy stuff. But here's something I didn't know. This is a sad state, but it's the way it was. Uh, this guy was an African American. He, I think he was a cook on board one of the ships. Really? At Pearl Harbor. And he rushed up 
and got a gun and was shooting down planes, just shooting wow. at the planes. This is like something you do here's, in Battlefield. Here's the funny thing, though. It's not that funny. Did he shoot down a no. plane? African Americans weren't allowed to be in positions where they controlled firing weapons. Yeah, this was before the uh, and integration. So, and so uh, he, he wasn't even supposed to do it. And so it's taken all these years. They're going to finally name a, a ship after him. Wow. So that's kind of nice. And and thank God we he, got past that. He's still with us. Oh, I don't know. I don't oh, think okay. so. No, okay. I think it's posthumously done. But that's kind of neat. But yeah, uh, uh, to see the, 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 the width and, and the size of these vessels... It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You have you ever been in any of these large ships? I, you know, I've never been on an aircraft carrier. My grandfather served on the USS Boxer in World War II. Uh -huh. and, um, and, and it's amazing because the aircraft carriers then were massive, and now the ones that they have now are twice as massive. Yeah. Um, I did read an article recently in The Economist about how the aircraft carriers have actually become a giant boondoggle for the U.S. Navy because everybody wants them. And they're massively expensive. And yeah. if any ever sink, if any ever sink, it's the end of the it's the end of the era for the aircraft carrier. So these aircraft carriers are so expensive, they know that they cannot go into war zones. So they have to they have to sort of be off to the side. Well, aircraft carriers they don't need to go to the war. No. Zone. That's the whole point. No, that's yeah, the really whole point. Right. Ships go to the war. You zone. launch. You launch off. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. this game is no different. That's ironically. Right. If you're smart, you keep your you exactly keep your you keep your distance. Yeah, right. you keep your way out right. there. That's what you get the little flunky drone things for to show you where to shoot. Well, let's talk a little um, carrier command, Aaron. Well, d my usual uh, disclaimer before we cover a game such as this: you are an aircraft carrier expert yeah, I, and a strategy game. And I think I can speak for you on this one. This game is so far beyond me that I can't begin to. This is why I don't like to ever say we do reviews because that would be ludicrous. Ludicrous statement, but we will give this game some coverage mm -hmm. as best we can. Sure. So, uh, Carrier Command. This came out in 89, Boat. Very late release. Well into the game. Yeah. Uh, in fact, this came out after the Amiga version. Mm -hmm. um, published by Rainbird Software. I like that name. Now, I, maybe you're going to answer this question, but this did not come on a cassette, right? Only disc, right? Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly okay. how it came. That's why I don't have it written down here. Because I, I, I know all. The I never pay attention to that because of the, because they always come on tape. All the instructions would not fit on a J card in this game. Trust me, oh, someone no. that's poured over the instruction. Well, file I mean, in they this game. they release cassette games with. Bo in fact, this would. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll get to something. I okay. think I can answer okay. this question. Okay. So this was put out by an outfit called uh, Real Time Games Software Limited. Uh, they were responsible for, uh, I, I don't think we've played any of these games. Well, we have played one, but not on this machine. They were responsible for uh, Argonautica, uh, Battle Command, Star Fox, Star Glider. Remember Star Glider? Uh, Star Strike 3D, Star Strike 2, and Tank Duel 3D. Uh, the uh, fellows that worked on it were a fellow named and Andrew Onions. What a name. Yeah. Uh, he did Star Strike 3D and Tank 3D. David Lowe who uh, worked on uh, Buggy Blast, Power Drift, Rasputin, the Star Glider games, and Thrust. I like that one. I like Thrust. Thrust. Uh, Derek Austin, uh, he worked on the Star Wars games, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, and Fighter Bomber. Uh, this was uh, your 128K Spectrum. Now this one, uh, this is, the, is this the first game we've ever covered that used a mouse? The, on the Spectrum. I'm not yes, sure. I don't absolutely. think we've ever played any other game that it's used the, the mouse. It's the first one that we've done that's used the I mouse. Had seen the fact, I'd seen the mouse option mm -hmm. in the emulator I used, but I didn't... I, that's the, I'd always wonder what it was there for. Right. And so we found out. And I will say, believe it or not, my crap emulator used the mouse emulator and worked just fine. What so, crap emulator are you using right I don't now? know, which I can't remember the name of, mm. it, to be honest with you. But <laughs> it's, there's two, but I, this time I used the crappiest one, but okay. it worked. So... Here's the what is this game? Okay, so uh, this game is set in a. Uh, I'm gonna. This is the flavor text. Effectively, the game is in the near future, uh, where a team of scientists have developed two robotic. For, this is the old, same old story. The scientists have developed two robotic aircraft carriers to colonize an arpeggio of 64 islands. Right, okay. never ever ever make robot military stuff. It's always a bad idea. Every time it happens, you get a hammering. So guess what happened? The more advanced carrier fell into the hands of a terrorist organization. I don't want to say who they are, but Cobra! Yep. Could, could be That's them. right. And they plan to conquer the ar archipelago for their own evil ends. Now, stop. Yeah. Okay. 
coolest bad guy organization name? Cobra? Yeah. Red Skull. Red Skull is an organization? Red Skelton. That's a guy, a comedian. Okay. Which of the three? I would go with Cobra. Yeah. The other ones aren't anything. I thought that was Captain America. No, Red Skull is a character, not an organization. What was the Captain America guy? Captain America is the superhero that no, plays no, Red no, Skull. No. The Avengers? No, no, but so the organization wasn't called Red Skull? No, no. You, Red Skull was a was a was a scientifically altered super Nazi. Okay, well, tell me somebody else besides Cobra then. Uh, well, it was Spectre. Spectre. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Culver versus Spectre. You never have a bad guy organization named like Clown Boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, saying the initials well, yeah. mean something like, I don't know how you can work that. Or like the Legion of Doom. Those are cool, you know, but yeah, there's no lamer ones, but yeah. So anyway, um, you your job is to go and take the less advanced carrier, because you get the dud, and you have to go and colonize the islands and then kill off the super good destroyer, the mm -hmm. super cruiser, all right? Sounds simple, right? Well, it doesn't sound simple. It it's sounds not hard, simple, and it is. So, what? Do you, so, what? Do you, how do you accomplish this? Well, let me let me do, tell you this story from the Aaron perspective. So, you this game comes up to this screen, and, and we're looking at it now. If you're watching the video, it's a screen of of it's like a uh, uh, it's like a, a uh, um, Scrabble game from hell. <laughs> Little yellow tiles. Each with a picture that there's no conceivable way you can understand or decipher. Oh, yeah. I mean, this when this thing popped up, of course, you know, I don't read any docs or anything when I first looked. And I knew instantly. I was like, okay. And someone in, I think someone in Discord uploaded the documentation. because so I was like, what in God's name is this? Mm -hmm. And it, it, trust me, having the documentation didn't help me that much. But, I, but I, what you basically can do in this game, when you boil it down, you control this aircraft carrier, this super carrier. Uh, the carrier has lasers on it. All right, it's a it's a it's a tough carrier. It's got a self repairing system. All right, and you also are armed with some like basically you've got drones that are, are different types of drones that you can use to basically help you uh, figure out what where to go, target stuff, etc. Which I'll get to that in a minute. So, but when you this thing comes up, it's like holy smokes. So just to get back to the overall game. Um, this game uses a uh, this game uses a vector style graphics mode. To I think that's a kind way of calling it monochrome. Well, I know it's I mean, it does this on most games. The exception is the C sixty four version, which does this from a top down two D viewpoint, which I didn't get to see. Are you I'm serious? Like, do you? Wow! I didn't get to look at that. I thought that sounded cool. I did look at the Amiga version this as well, and I know you did it as well. And it, the Amiga version is colorful, but it's it's better graphics, but it's not. It's mostly the same, really. I mean, for the most, didn't you think? It well, yeah, it is essentially the same yeah. game for sure. Now, get this boat. I like this was kind of neat. Um, the game featured a sample, which I never heard this. The song that comes up in this thing is pretty good. Mm -hmm. It comes up, you're like, oh, listen to that. Mm -hmm. So the game features a sampled theme by a fellow named Dave Lowe, and this got expand. This was a full blown studio recorded song called "Just Another Mission." Wow. All right? And get this. Where was the where was the actual song? Well, released? get this. I'm getting there. Okay. So remember when I I remember Star uh, Glider Two mm -hmm. that came with that audio cassette. Yep. This yeah. one had the same bit. Wow. Yeah. It had a tape. It has a there's a version of this that has the second cassette on it that has the actual. Well, song. I know you bought Star Glider Two for bought, the cassette. And also, then I gifted Star Glider Two. That's what you do. After I played it, you well, buy it and you gift it. Well, I wanted to read the book. That's mm -hmm. when I read it. And I was I was good to go. Uh, but I thought that was neat. Anytime you can get a tape that's got the song on it that comes with the game, kind of cool. So when you start this game, you've got two choices. Well, you got three. You got options, and this has a, 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 a quite a few options. Just you can uh, now. I never use the joy. I guess you can use the joystick as a mouse, but that sounds horrific. To try even try that would be nonsense. Yeah, me? I mean that that brings me back to the bad old days of the Super Nintendo, yeah. where they had so many games where you're using the pad. So I didn't even no attempt good. to try yeah. not use the mouse. The mouse, but it's got Kimston. I guess that's a Kimston mouse. And from, I mean, it's yeah, yeah. Kimston mouse. That's what it is. Um, anyway, aside from options, you've got two other choices. You got strategy and action. Now, this is one of those games where inherently, when I pick my first option, I look at the choices. I'm like, I'm going to go with the action one. That's a big mistake. Because the action one, so in strategy mode, you get one island, and the enemy has eight islands, and the rest of the islands are up for grabs. Right. Okay? And the, the two carriers are at their own island. Okay? 
uh, now, the other carrier is better than you. It can get to more islands quicker. So you're playing catch up to the other guy. Mm -hmm. In action mode, each player possesses a network of islands. The enemy carrier has more than you, and it, and you begin right near the center of the map. And the other, and so basically, the other carrier can just grum up on you and beat the crap out of you. Or you can go right up on the other carrier and Which give him the old elbow. You can't do that because you'll get mashed into a no. fine powder. So the first thing I did in this game was get blown up many times as I struggled vain, and vain attempt to understand the controls. As we mentioned, there are, there's a huge set of tiles that tell you what uh, the various... Uh, they just go to different menus of different things you can do. So I'm going to try to explain some of these tiles as best I can. You stop me uh, when you hear me screw up. So amongst the things you can do from, this, from your main screen is uh, you can go and outfit your various drones. Well, let me get the names of these drones. Uh, the Manta is No, one. wait, what? No. Yeah. You're wrong already. Yeah, you can. No, you can. No, just, the drones are not named Manta and Walrus. Those are not drones. They're not drones. They're they're, they're your craft. Drones are different, different, different things. Vehicles. You never actually played this game, did no, you? No, listen. They're, no, they are drones. No, one's a walrus, but you man them. When you I man drones, them. That means they're not drones. That, but it's the same thing. It's your it's, crafts. They're extensions of the your drone. Ship. Is a different thing in I this game. I understand. They're extensions of your craft. Is my point. They're extensions of your craft. You control them. And when the mantas get out of range, the screen goes blurry and they and they drop out of the sky. I know what they are. Okay. So anyhow, getting back to this, you can go and outfit these items. You can outfit them with a couple different items. There's different types of missiles. There's some stuff that you... Because once you capture an island, you also have to get get it rolling We've on the got island. It, yeah. Yeah. What was your What was the first thing you did when you did? Because I okay. watched the, I watched the demo. So the the and first the first thing I did was just pretty, I followed what the guy did, and that's what I did. I was always go in, take my craft. You could have, I think you have up to four of these things, and go in and outfit them and get them ready to go out and look around. The first thing I did was I was like, okay, I got my craft, I got my aircraft carrier. I'm on the I'm on the bow. I'm going to send out a manta. Okay. okay. The manta is the the flying craft. So you outfitted it. Okay. I outfitted it, and I was like. Okay, click on the thing, boom, boom. I launch the Manta. The Manta, like the flying nun, yeah. takes off and then immediately crashes yeah. into the ocean. Yeah. Okay. The reason why this happens is because you have, there are two different fuel gauges on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You've got sort of like your general fuel gauge yes. and then you've got your individual Manta fuel That's gauge. That's right. And you have to put fuel in it. <laughs> you got to put fuel in the Manta. Well, you're Other just killing me for not knowing what I was doing. I didn't do that. Otherwise, you'll launch it. It will fly into the air for a brief, the briefest of seconds and then crash. Now tell into them the, the other ocean. thing with the Manta that makes them hard to use. Well, there's lots of things. Well, the one thing that used to, if you go too far away, mm -hmm. you just, just, <laughs> it would just, it would just keep it going. It just crashes. No, yeah. just because the screen is well, fuzzy and it just, it just goes away. Here's the thing: you have an option to have these craft be automatically, automatically controlled. Yeah, with the A. Right. Yeah. Um, you can click on the joystick icon to give you joystick controls. Yeah. Or actually, basically, it turns it into almost like a star glider. Yeah. Um, where you're controlling with the with, with the mouse, yeah. and um, once you are that's flying, that's that I was I was like, man, well, this is familiar. That's what it is. Right. I, I didn't add two and two. Yeah. Right. Once you're flying around, um, you can uh, you're supposed to target various things on the island and, and blow them up and things like right. that. I was never able to actually successfully do anything. I with, blew with stuff Amanda. up. Were you able yeah. to blow stuff yeah, 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 up? Yeah. Okay, I was able to target things and kind of fire away, but I was never. I was able. So you were really more successful at this game. Than no, I was. that's impossible. <laughs> you just told me I didn't even play it. Now you're saying, "Well, you're better at well, me. the Manta." Well, it was when you called the Manta a drone. The Manta is a drone. It's not a drone. You're in there in the cockpit. You're not in it because you're you, like once the, it, Listen, what did you do? The first thing you did with the Manta? What did you do to it? I crashed it. Now, if you were in the Manta, you would be dead. So clearly, you weren't in it. That's a fair point. Okay, thank you. Okay, fool. So. These two things are basically the what you use to go out and try to you can target with the with with the manta. And then the other thing to watch is helpful to like basically do stuff on the islands because it's an amphibious craft. All right. Now, there are details with these things that I can't give you. I can't tell you the variety of weapons. 
I can't tell you exactly all the well, things you let's, can do with them, let's, I don't know Let's talk a little it. bit about how you outfit them. Yeah, which so is you, not easy. Yeah, you go into the, you go into, there's, there's a screen where you actually go into the, um, it, it's almost like you're going below decks yeah. in the aircraft carrier. And um, there is a menu where you can select various weapons for the craft. And there are some weapons that you can only put in the front. There are some weapons you can only put in the rear. Right. And um, and so basically the way that I did this was I just kind of went around and I, I found things that had a cool picture. And I would put those <laughs> into the craft. That explains a lot. So you were probably putting things in that couldn't do any damage, right. for example. So that might have been part of the reason why I was unable to actually destroy anything on the island. Um, but you do have a wide variety. And this is one of the things that I appreciate about appreciated about this game is that you you don't have to buy anything at the beginning you don't have to like make your load out everything is already set for you and you make the choices from there so we talked about the manta why don't we take a little bit of time and talk about the other kind of craft that you can use in this game the wall the land brace craft yeah, yeah the walrus i guess the walrus is sort of an amphibious craft. that's exactly what it is yeah. it, it launches into the ocean and then but the walrus can actually crawl onto land i'm not sure if you are able um does it have, do you think, tank treads? Do you think that's... One would assume it's just like a normal... I don't know. It, listen, it could be one of those boat cars. Yeah, like the duck it boat. It could be a boat o car I took one of those yeah. over in Boston. You know, those things go, are pretty much getting banned everywhere because they're killing people. Yeah, yeah, they kill people. Yeah. Thousands of people I'm assuming it's just more like... I pictured more of an amphibious craft, like a World War II type of a thing. You know? Yeah. So you, <clears throat> the walrus you man the same way. And... Um, I found the walrus much more easy to control, of course, because it, it doesn't fly up in the air. Um, now, what's interesting is that whenever you, we watched, I think we probably both watched the same Let's Play of this. Uh, the first thing that the person does when he's playing in strategy mode is he immediately destroys uh, his backup walruses and his backup mantas. So he only has one walrus and one manta. And he says, because... What that allows you to do is it allows you to maneuver much better because you have so much less weight, and then you can go and you can blow up the other carrier more quickly. Yeah, I never did any of that. I never did that either. That seemed crazy <laughs> to me. I saw him do that. that you like, would, no. Yeah, that you would get rid of all yeah. that stuff. So when I played this game, I only played it in action mode. Okay. I like the feeling of being right in the thick of things right away. Even did you, though, did even, you know the difference? Yeah, okay. because in, the, in strategy mode, you start out and you've got to really play a long time before you even encounter another player. Right, I like that because I didn't know what I was doing, so I needed time to figure out what okay. was happening. Okay, okay. But yeah, but go ahead. But anyway, um, so when I played this, I always played it in action mode. And I read a strategy where somebody actually was able to actually instead of just trying to capture the islands and eventually destroy the enemy tanker, they were able to basically maneuver through the islands, locate the enemy tanker, destroy him, and then work their way back up through the backside, taking over the islands and not having to worry about the enemy destroyer. Were you, was that, was oh, that a strategy I you didn't employed? Have, my strategy was like, click button, pray for help. That, mm. was, that was not anywhere, I didn't get anywhere near like good enough just to, to, uh, to get into where I could have a strategy. Once I figured out what to do, that was a big help. I mean, I was trying to send stuff out the islands. I think I was capturing islands. I was putting stuff on them, so I assumed that meant they were mine, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not even sure about that. So your ship as a whole, if you if you should be a, uh, if you should actually get your ship into a combat area, I mentioned that it had lasers. It's also got a repair system. It's kind of an, it's kind of neat the way it works. And I did experience this, unfortunately, right before I sank most of the time. But your repair system on the ship will repair stuff that happens on your boat and depending on what gets where you get shot it depends on what damage is done and the repair system um it sort of launches automatically it can whenever. even re yeah it, you can even get hit in the repair system mm -hmm. and then it has to repair itself the only thing it can't repair is basically the bulkhead of the ship the, the actual structure of the, the structure ship. Of yeah because once right. that's gone you're you're done of course you could have i think uh i read you could have up to eight walruses and and, and mantas but uh uh you can only use four i this was this is where I was losing track of what I was doing. I, could, I I would do one thing at a time, try my best. But the mantis is—I don't think I ever successfully landed one. I think they all got killed. Well, what you do is you—you you know, after you accomplish your mission, you immediately go back to autopilot and you click the button that says "Return to Base." Yeah, you're I not never, landing this thing back on the carrier. Yeah, I never, I never, did, I never got any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I should mention, by the way, that your ship is the ACC Epsilon and your opponent is the ACC Omega. 
Really? So it, it did get the better name mm. in that in that department. It's a shame that they didn't, um, you know, name your ship something cool. Yeah. Anymore. The uh, I mentioned that your that your that your mantis after they you lose con and in the water see if you lose contact with them. I read, which I didn't know this, but you can actually dis you can dispatch a communications like item on your on your uh, on your ships on your little drones, and they can take it out and they can extend how far you could you could actually fly around, which would be cool. Now you I never tried that. You keep talking about drones, but you haven't mentioned the actual drones that are on your ship. What do you mean the actual drones? So there are actual things called drones on your ship. And you launch these things, and they protect you from incoming mantas and oh, walrus attacks. See, I don't think I ever launched those. Yeah. Because I got instantly murdered. You've got to do that, or yeah. else you're going to get instantly yeah. murdered. I, did, I didn't do it. I okay. never did it. Okay. You see, there's the shortcomings right. of this. This game was uh, well over my ability to understand, mm. for the most part. But I, did, I gave it the college try. Uh, I did it. I did think, getting back to the, the graphics... Um, it's not pretty, but I mean, it, the the wireframe sort of look to it does work. You can well, it sort of works. It doesn't really work. It's that well. not the best. But I mean, this is a case study in how one can use um, sort of like a, a cross hatching and uh, all of the all of the things that you learned in a middle school art class to uh, to kind of give you <laughs> a sense of like what is land, what is water. What is a solid object? Yeah. But at the end of the day, your brain just sort of rejects it all and just says, what are we doing here? Why are we not playing the Amiga version? Well, um, this, this was, you know, really a game I admire for the, given that, you know, the old college try on the spectrum, but it's really not an enjoyable experience. Not because the interface is bad. The interface is fine. It's just the monochromatic depiction of all of these different things it's just blue until the cows come home and whenever you're looking at various things you have to just constantly tell your brain okay well this is the thing that is supposed to represent this thing and maybe it's because i learned most of what i learned about this game from watching somebody play the amiga version but it was really, really difficult for me to get any kind of enjoyment out of the the, the, the ZX Spectrum version um, after seeing it. Maybe if I would have seen this on the Spectrum first and then gone over, but it's very, very sparse. It's very sparse. Now, on the upside, when you're flying the Manta and when you're piloting the Walrus, uh, it's very smooth, and I thought that the mouse control was actually quite good. Uh, this was my first time, just like Aaron, using the mouse on the Spectrum, and I thought it was very responsive. Um, I'm not sure, um, you know, how widespread the mouse was in terms of peripherals on the Spectrum, how many people had them, but using the PC mouse through Spectaculator, it, it worked quite well. Uh, so I, I was pleased with that, and I was pleased with the, the, the UI, but just... I don't know. This is this just seems like a step too far for me. This is really where if you want to play a game like Carrier Command, maybe it's time to shell out the money for a 16-bit system. I'm going to disagree with you on this. Okay. And I'll tell you why. And uh, listen, because this isn't my sort of game, or I don't have the aptitude to to succeed at it. Um, they what they've done here is I think it's quite remarkable. Uh, you know, I don't like, and we get this a lot playing a lot of European stuff where they don't they don't have any actual words on the screen, or they don't they just have lots of buttons. Mm -hmm. And I can take this in small doses. Even a Hook was that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but all that said, this game there's a lot to it, and and so that and that's its strength as well as its weakness. Uh, there's a lot to it, but if this is your type of game, I think they've done an, a pretty good job in putting together a pretty. Um, a pretty large, expansive game with a lot that requires a lot of strategy and thought. That I think I think it delivers well enough on the graphics to where it's playable. I mean, if you think of what you, the, just the guts that port something like this to the spectrum is is gutsy. It shows and, that even in '88 there were still. You said that this came out in '89, right? Yeah. Okay, so maybe my date is wrong. Um, the, the, uh, there was still such a user base of the ZX Spectrum in 89 that this was worth putting the effort into porting over. I mean, Amazing. think about, think about the, here's the other systems this was released on, okay, to put it in perspective. We mentioned the Amiga, the Atari ST and DOS, okay, Amstrad, the C64, and which did a different version, mind you, and the Mac, mm -hmm. okay? 
So you talk about batting well out of your weight class here, out of your batting average. The Spectrum is, and of course, like I said, the C64, they, they didn't even try this on the C64. Right. right. Not, not to bury the 64, but they didn't even give this a shot. They knew so the like, Spectrum was the only 8 bit machine. Well, that the could Spectrum it. can, ha they, they had a plan. Right. Here's the thing. Here's them. the thing. The Spectrum fans, people that owned a Spectrum, were well accustomed to having sort of monochrome <laughs> gaming experiences. C64 people were not that way. They were used to having full color things. And the thing is, the C64 couldn't handle this in full color. They'd have to make it just like this to get it to run on the C64. I would wonder if this, the, as part, if part of the reason that this that they didn't use this on the 64 is uh, is because of the memory restraints. Right. Because this is a 128k right. game. I would say that I would not be surprised because there's a lot going on here. And trust me when I tell you this, and I mentioned at the top of this at uh, this look at this game. There is so much stuff that I had no idea. I mean, you can do stuff like uh, launch flares. There's all the stuff about about outfitting your various items that you can do and retrofitting them. You can make more. The stuff about actually taking over the island. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds. There's a wealth of things. Right. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that this is a full foot because uh, there's so much stuff that I just looked at in the docs. I was like, holy smokes. Mm -hmm. you... And is this the best interface Maybe because this is sort of the interface they use on all the other machines. Is mm -hmm. it the most colorful? No, but I mean they. But they, the interface is pretty close to what is on the Amiga. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. my point. I mean, this was pretty much the interface, mm -hmm. and so I think this is quite a an achievement on the on the Spectrum. But it's not a game I would have played on any system. Spectrum, Amiga, anything. It's just not my type of game. Too hit. Too much for me to keep track of. But you know, a a for effort on on in that department. Um, I did look up the. Uh, uh, I did look up how this did. <clears throat> this did. This got an eight point one three score on World of Spectrum. A very good score. Yeah, it is a very good. Score. Um, the reviews for this were off the charts. This is one of the highest reviewed games we ever pl have played. Um, Crash gave, gave this a, a ninety six. They said it was the best seafaring game ever. The best seafaring yeah. game ever. Sinclair wow. user gave this a ninety six. They said it was a masterful piece of programming, one of the finest products I've ever seen on the Spectrum. A game on par with Elite. Okay. All right. Uh, the Games Machine uh, gave this a 94. You know, and they said, uh, well-defined, neatly shaded, solid 3D objects, flaw faultless presentation and gameplay, which betters its 16-bit counterparts. And this was something I read that this had improvements over the other 16 of the 16 bit version. You know, I'm not an expert on the 16 bit version. Maybe they're right. Yeah. Uh your Sinclair gave this a 92. They said it was astonishingly brilliant stuff. Uh Ace gave this a very solid score as well. Uh so this it also won the Crash uh Smash you know the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, this thing was well, well regarded. I mean, every I don't think we've had a game that was this well regarded. So I, and again, I, is it great? You'd have to tell me. It's up above me, but I mean, it got very good scores. I did look this up on eBay, and actually, the the money for this is all over the net. But I'll let you read our reviews first. Okay. Uh, let's then we see. got a couple. A couple we people got, braved it. Yeah. One, one, one guy. Yeah. The one and only Chris Foles. I know Graham was in was in transit this week, I think. So I yeah, we well, had yeah, a couple people coming in from Amiga Ireland. So uh, uh, Chris Fold says, I have fond memories of this from the Amiga. I loved exploring in what was for the time an impressive 3D world. The Spectrum version is an incredible feat of software. However, it suffers a lot. If you don't have a Kempston mouse, forget about it. The controls are horrible. However, without the cool color 3D, the core of the game has become more exposed, revealing all its flaws and nuances. I feel they were too busy seeing if they could. They would never thought if they should. Five out of ten. I bet. Something tells me that this game would suffer that sort of look on most systems now. Mm. I think <clears throat> the interface on this is, it, it is ancient. I mean, it, it reminds me of the games that, the way they used to be. Dif they, were, they were difficult games, mm -hmm. you know, they were not. And it's easier to make a more approachable set setup for this now. Um, again, I looked up on eBay. Uh, you can get the game for anywhere from I saw it going anywhere from twenty six to fifty five bucks. I did see sealed copies going as well. So if that's if, 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 if I saw at least one, so if, if that's your bag, 
Uh, this did get a sequel, by the way, uh, called Battle Command, which I didn't even come close to looking at. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's mm. like, get out while the getting's mm -hmm. good. You know, but overall, you know, this is one... I hate games like this, and not just because I don't like them. It's because I wish I was better at them. I mean, that's what bugs me. I'm just... Uh, I, when I sit here and, and say that I gave this a whirl, I mean, I... I labored on this thing quite. I played this more than I did the Amiga game this week, and not because I wanted to, it's because I was trying to have something so I could, when I got here, I wouldn't sound like a blubbering fool. It was it was hard to get a grip on what I was doing. Uh, once I and it's one of those games you must read the documentation, you know, and a strategy and, and, guide. And this is something that, um, you know, back in the day when you received a manual, uh, you would pour over all of it, not only the mechanics of the game itself, but the flavor text. And this is one of these games. That gives you the full history of the the aircraft carrier and, and all its antecedents, and um, and when you're pouring over this as a text file on the internet, some of that is lost, and you really just want to get down to the meat of like, what do I need to do in this game to be successful? And uh, I felt like if I would have had the actual manual itself versus just looking at the text file, maybe I would have been able to absorb more of it more quickly. But the, at its root, this game is capture the flag. You've got uh, two aircraft carriers on opposite sides of the map at the beginning, if you're playing the strategy mode, and you're basically just trying to capture each other's islands. You're trying to capture all the islands and eventually destroy the other carrier. That's the, that's the meat of the game. If you go into action mode, it basically just gives you more islands and you're, you're facing off. You're closer to the carrier when you start. Yeah, it's it was something. It, it does remind me of those games where you get that manual and you take it to school with you, take mm -hmm. it to can or right. whatever, and you're like, oh yeah. boy, I can't wait to give this thing a whirl. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the way it was. You know, back in the day, you only get a couple games a year. You're going to you're gonna pour over this. This reminded me when I bought Armageddon for the Amiga. Very similar. I was like, this looks great. I'll read the book. And I knew the second I picked the manual up, I was like, oh, I'm screwed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and screwed I was. Absolutely. Well, we want to thank our um, supporters. Uh, first of all, we want to thank Spence for uh, choosing this game this week, a member of the Clives Club. And we want to thank all our uh, Spectrum supporters. We got Hermski, Andrew Waite, David Spencer, Cap and Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Boss Man, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassall. Thank you so much. And if you guys enjoy Our Sinclair and you're not yet a supporter, please visit our page at Our Sinclair. Uh, I'm sorry, patreon.com slash our Sinclair. I uh, also want to thank everybody over in the chat. It's been a lively hopping chat this evening. We've got Brock101 here, Picard2010, Edvin Helen, Funkle Dunkle, Funkle Drunkle. Not really sure how to He's pronounce that. He's stealing your that. gimmick. Yeah. Um, L. Curtis B. Go to Go Sub, Edvin Helen ensconced in the man cave. Uh, and of course, our mod, mod among men. Pixels of Dawn Gaming. Thank you so much for being with us. We do record the show live every Friday at 5.30 Eastern. We'd love for you to join us live in the chat, if you can, over at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Aaron, next week we're going to be playing The Great Escape. Oh, oh now see, it's funny. This one I'd heard of a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This was suggested by Clive's Club this, member Graham W. Vebke. This is based on the film. Yeah. Oh, boy. I don't actually, I said yes, but I don't know. I think if it's the one I'm thinking of, it is. Is The Great Escape a train film? No. No, this is a uh, escaping from a prison camp film. Oh. Doot, doot. You never seen that movie? Mm -mm. It's good. Did you it start it. with doot, doot? Yeah. But, mm. Hey, look. We, we, people seem to think it's a good game. I, yeah. I remember reading about this way before we even started the show, so that'll be great. I've never got to, I've never got to play this. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Until then, rewind tape. And press play. Hey, you were recording and everything. Yeah. Nice work. You yeah. ever heard of that movie? The Great Escape. Yeah. I think I get it confused with The Great... Had a big motorcycle great... jumping scene in it. What about The Great Train Robbery? It's a completely different film. Hmm. Completely different film. All right. Amiga Ireland Trip Report is next. Oh, boy. I just had to sit here for you get to ask me insightful questions. Steve McQueen, thank you. I was killing me. Steve McQueen, this was his big signature film. Before Bullet? Yeah. I think this is before Bullet, yeah. You saw the Bullet car sold last week, didn't you?
I didn't see that. $18 That's why I billion. That dollars. Yeah, it was yeah. an insane amount of money. It is based on the film, isn't it, you guys? In the chat. Make sure I'm not an idiot. But I'm pretty sure it's based on the film. I'm telling you, man. I haven't had Jaeger in a long time. Yeah. I, are you? Is there still Jaeger in that cup? Jaeger's well, great. You're not going to make it to this report if you keep drinking that. For God's sake. I'm going to have to scoop you off the floor. Listen. I know what I've had. Yeah. I Jackie's know. got it, but you got that right. Okay, thank you, Pix. Yeah, that's it. That's it, Mitt. Yeah, that's a one. That's a one. That'll no one can tell that I've been drinking. No, oh, no, no. They just think you've, you've suddenly become sloth-like. <laughs> and for a second, at the end of that last show, I felt like I was on like a, uh, one of those public radio shows. Like, hey, everyone. Come on, Edwin. Don't break. No, listen. Boat can't handle it, but let's not rag on Jägermeister. Where is Jägermeister from? Is that German? Well, it's, I would assume, yeah. Let's... You're mic'd up, so don't go crazy. No. Yeah, you're right. Germany. Since 1878. What, what, didn't the name didn't give it away? Jägermeister? Yeah. I guess Meister. That means, like, Burgermeister. All right, let's get this going. People are waiting up for this. You're, to hear your, this ought to be good. At least, I'll tell you what, you're in the right frame of mind to rec recall all your Irish and, and I am. Adventures. I've drank... But, I've drank at least 10 times as much tonight as I did my entire trip in Arab. Very good. It was a shame that I didn't drink more. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Amiga Ireland Trip Report, starring me, Boat, and Aaron. I'm his assistant. Yes. He's wearing the Amiga Ireland t-shirt. I'm wearing my Amiga Ireland badge right now. And um, so... This is basically just sort of a recap of my trip over to Athlone. This is my second year, so yeah. it's not like I'm an Amiga Ireland rookie or anything. Let's start with, before we even get into that, let's start with your drive to uh, up to the airport. Yeah. To your relative's home. Tell everybody what you have to do just to get to the point where you can so fly away. Just to get to the point where I could drive to an airport that had a direct flight to Dublin, I had to drive approximately seven and a half hours. Uh -huh. To where? Uh, this is to uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Uh -huh. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from the great city of Philadelphia. I have been to Wilmington and Philly. Yeah. And Wilmington's no great shakes. No. Um, but my, then again, it is Philly. Yeah. So yeah. You, it's not that far from Philly. Yeah. How long does it take you to get from one to the other again? Uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's basically Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, my sister is lucky enough to live in one of the suburbs surrounding Wilmington. Mm -hmm. Very nice neighborhood. Very oh, yeah. nice neighborhood. What does your sister do up there? She is. Have? She works for DuPont. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Very she good. is an engineer. So, so you left. Tell the people when you got left Hurricane for. I left Hurricane uh, about ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I arrived in uh, Delaware about six o'clock uh -huh. that evening. Now, I can't remember. Was there fog or was that in rain or was that on the way back? That was on the way back. Okay. Yeah. Pretty pretty clear skies. Now tell people were you apprehensive or trepidatious? Because I remember last year you were pretty nervous when you left. This and so the second time out were you less nervous or? Well, this year I had more of an idea of what equipment. I needed to take. Yeah. I went back and forth sort of pre-trip on whether I should buy a bunch of equipment. And of course, in the grand boat tradition, yeah. I bought two or $300 worth of equipment, which I uh, received and then promptly sent back to Amazon. I knew, you didn't have to tell me that. <laughs> yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Um, what I decided at the end of the day was I was like, listen, whoever is on the panel, the Yeti, the good old Yeti, strong and true, will be able to pick up each of them. It did. Um, it did a pretty good yeah. job. Yeah, and uh, and so I didn't need to buy a whole bunch of extra equipment. I did pack a full extra suitcase full of nothing but recording gear for the trip, mm -hmm. and it turned out that uh, everything that I packed was necessary, so it was good. Oh, good, because I, I, I think your system was better than the house system that they but, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yes. So you uh, your ride up was uneventful. You got on the plane, and the next day you were off. This would have been what morning, what day? So uh, Wednesday evening, uh -huh. I departed from Philadelphia to uh, fly to Dublin about 6 o'clock. Right. And uh, I arrived at about 5 o'clock in the morning uh -huh. in, now, in Dublin. And what did you do on the plane? Uh, well, I, I sat down, yeah. and I informed my seatmate. Uh, we did have an open seat. Most transatlantic flights are three, three abreast. Yeah. And uh, there was an open seat against me, and uh, and so uh, we were we were, my, my seat partner and I both rejoiced in the fact that there was an open seat next yeah. to us. We we shared a moment of mirth. Yeah. And then I said, please tell the flight attendant that I will be sleeping during this flight and to not bring me supper. Yep. Then I quickly popped a couple of Ambien into the old noggin. Mm -hmm. You went in stasis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I washed it down and uh, I clo some Jägermeister. closed my yeah. eyes. When I awoke, 
I was in the great Bam. land of Ireland. Now let me ask you, were you at the window or in the aisle? Window seat. So you really had it all. I booked my flight long, long ago and was able to select my window seat. So you woke up and you were you were refreshed and ready to rock and roll and you were I in felt Ireland. great. That's I great. Felt great. So you got off the plane, you're the, what was the weather like? And you said it was super early. Yeah, Ireland. super early. Five o'clock in the morning, still yeah. dark outside. I yeah. stumble out of the, uh, the, the airport and I make my way to the bus station. Okay. Okay. Now you did this last time as well, but this is a different town than last time. Well, it? it was a, a, a different situation because I'd booked my coach ticket in, a, in advance. Uh, they called the bus the coach oh, over I there. Okay. Wow. Good. And, uh, and so, but this time I was like, you know what? I don't know what time I'm going to get there. I'm just going to get there, make my, make my ticket and go. Uh -huh. So I made my way to the, um, it looks like a toll booth where all the bus operators sort of hang out before yeah. you go. And I asked the bus operator, I said, where is the bus that goes to Athlone? Yeah. And he said, well, it's, a, it's this, this, this guy over here. And I said, what time does it leave? Yeah. And he said, hell if I know, brother. And I said, well, thank you, sir. And I, I, I vacated the, the station. They were becoming um, annoyed with me because I was asking, I asked more than one question. Mm -hmm. So I, I made my way to the, uh, the sort of, it's kind of an alcove where the bus has come pick you up from. I don't know if you've seen bus stops here on the Kanawha, um, or it's, it's, it's like the um, the Putnam County mass transit system, the Kanawha Valley transit system. It's so, sort of an alcove. Yeah. Made my way there. There was a ticket machine there. It was broken. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Those guys at the, the shed were no help. The ticket machine was broken. But then I remember that I had my smartphone and I'd paid AT&T for access to my data plan. Yeah. So I bought a, I bought a ticket online and when the bus arrived, I just showed my ticket through my phone to the bus driver. Yeah. He accepted that yeah. for some reason. Yeah. And I, I boarded the bus, and it was a short uh, two-hour trip. It was the, oh. they call it the X series. The X20 versus the regular 20 takes you to Athlone in only two hours versus three and a half hours in the normal week. So you were a good piece from the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I didn't realize you had to drive So if you think boat. about, if you, if you turn your hand towards your face. Yeah and you look at your lower thumb knuckle, okay? Okay, okay I meant your right hand. Oh, yeah, sorry. Now turn your palm towards your face. Turn your, no, no, there you go. Now look at your lower thumb knuckle. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's where Dublin is. Yeah. Then find a spot closest to the center of your hand that you can, yeah. and that is Athlone. Okay. Okay, Ireland, eerily similar to the shape of your hand. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So um, about two hours. The whole country you can drive across in four hours. Mm -hmm. So Ireland. you went right in pretty much the middle of it. It's the middle. The you dead. think they put the airport somewhere in the middle? Well, they put the airport closest to where most people live. I see. So yeah. the po population most lives near Dublin. True. Gotcha. True. Dublin, I Galway. Know. Yeah. I didn't know. I had no idea. Um, and so anyway. What did you do on the bus? On the bus, I mostly, I looked out the window and I chatted to the driver. The driver was a delightful young fellow. I thought you said the guys were jerks. No, he was very nice. So this isn't the same guy you talked to at the, at the other thing? No, no, no. no. This was, a, this, the driver was very nice. He was, he yeah. was born in England, but mostly grew up or, around. I think he'd been in Ireland for the past 10 years or so. And uh, he, he had a lot of kind words to say for Ireland. Yeah. And um, and he, he basically gave me a tour of Dublin as we were pulling out of Dublin. So now, were, how many people were on the bus? Uh, but maybe about five. Mm -hmm. It was mostly empty. So you sat right up front. Right up front. If I don't sit it right up front, I get sick. Oh, really? I'm one of those guys. Geek. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, three hours on this bus, two and a half hours. Whatever. Right. You arrive in Athlone. And how, so by this time, it's what, 9 a.m.? 8 like a.m. All right. 8 a.m. I arrive in Athlone. Then I have to take the long trek from the bus station to where my my B and B is. Now is this on foot or this we, is on foot? Okay, how long is that? Okay, uh, I I walk. How big a town is Athlone? Athlone, you know, I don't know population figures, mm -hmm. but it's a ten minute walk from the train station or the bus station to where sort of the bridge that leads to Athlone proper is. I see. So cunningly. They put the bus station well out of town. Absolutely. So I was hoofing it. Yeah. I was hoofing it. Luckily, this year, I, uh, I, like I said, I paid for data on my phone, so I was able to use the Google Maps to get to where I needed to go. Mm -hmm. Good so, thing you had a signal. You'd been bugged. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I crossed the bridge into Athlone. Yeah. You know, it's, at this point, I'm feeling very nostalgic because it looks just like it did last year when I was there. Uh -huh. um, and I make my way to my Airbnb. Okay. So... I chose this air this Airbnb on for two reasons. One, because Chris Folds was staying there. Okay. Two, because they advertised the full Irish breakfast at a discount for Ooh. lodgers. 
Okay. okay. And I was like, full Irish breakfast. That sounds like they'll probably, they'll be open, you know, eight o'clock in the morning. It's not super early. Mm-mm. Gosh, no. Yeah. No. So I was like, I'll just, even if I'm there early and my room's not ready, I'll just have a nice breakfast. Good idea. I'll, I'll full chill breath, out. Full yeah. I want to hear what that is. Yeah. So I get there, the place is shut up like a, like a safe. Okay. Okay. They don't open till 1030. So okay. the Irish are a late rising bunch. It's 830 in the AM. Yeah. Okay. There, there is a picnic table yeah. sort of randomly placed outside my establishment. That's so for, I, That's for suckers. I seat myself at the picnic table. <laughs> Meanwhile, the commuters are walking past me, giving me the old creepy guy glare. Right, Normal, what, are you, what are you wearing? Oh, I'm wearing my travel clothes. What? Sleeping tunic, nothing else. And, uh, it, yeah, and so they, they, they're giving me the old the side eye, as yeah. they say. And so, um, so I'm like, well, this this can't stand. This cannot stand. Yeah. So I I use my phone again, and I I go on the booking.com where yeah. I I made my my and I I call the number and this guy hello, and I say is this the Bailey? And he says yes. And I say, I'm here and I'm 15 hours early. Would you mind letting me in? He said yeah. And I find out this guy comes out. He's very very kind. His name is Seamus. Yeah. It's a true Irish, yeah. Irish, Irish name. And he says, your room isn't ready, but I'll give you this room that you can sleep in for a couple hours till we open up. And I say, thank you. Sir. Wow. You got lucky there, eh? I got incredibly lucky because spending two and a half hours on that, on that, uh, that picnic table in my sleeping tunic, that would have been no good. No. Yeah. And so, um, I sleep for a couple hours, then I come downstairs and I have this Eggs Benedict to yeah. beat the band. Are you familiar with Eggs Benedict? I am. I am. I am familiar with. I've never. I don't eat those, but I know. I know. Of, You're not really an egg guy. Are I'm not. You? No. no. Easter egg. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, Cadbury jelly beans. Egg. Yeah. Like those, yeah. Right. Um, and then Seamus gives me a tour of his establishment. He is the proprietor, and uh, he he tells me about all the things they've got going on. <laughs> And then he says, you should go over to Sean's Bar. It's the oldest pub in Ireland. Yeah. And I remember this from last year. Yeah, so I, I make my way yeah. over to Sean's Bar. They were open. They were open. It was, of course, at this time, it was 1130 in the morning. Yeah. There was only two people in there. There was a musician and the barkeep. Yeah. And he was talking about the gig that he played last night. I took a little video, you know, kind of zooming around and things. It was it was very nice. There was a fire, a real fire. Not one of those fake fires like you get here in the States. But a real, a real wood fire was burning. This part, this uh, pub has been open since the year 900. Awesome. Yeah, the awesome. oldest pub in Ireland. Me and my buddy looked up pictures of it you went, while you were there. Mm-hmm. We had a, we looked up the history and stuff. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. <clears throat> and uh, the rest of the day on Friday, I basically spent walking around Athlone, and then I ended the day back at the B and B. Uh, Seamus clocked out, and he said, "John, let's have a pint together." And he just sat down at the bar with me, and we drank some Guinness, and it was it was a wonderful. That sounds evening. lovely. It was that sounds wonderful lovely. And then, you, then you checked in your B and B. Yeah. That point. Now, how was that? It was fine. It uh, was fine. Uh, now get to the point. Irish breakfast. How was it? The next morning, I want to see what's in this. Came thing. back down for the Irish breakfast. Okay, you've got multiple things that look like sausages. Mm-hmm. Okay? Sounds good, but they're Suspicious not suspicious looking sausages. Yeah, but they're not sausages. One is completely blood. Okay. It's cooked blood. Now, are you familiar with eating blood? I do know that that is a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not with me, it's not. Not with you. Okay. So you not not personally eating the blood. No. no okay. No. Well, there's one that's it's all blood. I think they call it the all blood. Yeah. Okay. Makes and, sense. Yeah, and it's 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 a it's a it's it's, it's kind of a hockey puck. Okay. But the then, blood is not liquid. It's, no, it's, it's because uh, it's been cooked. That's right. Yeah. So it's cooked. Blood. So how was it? Eh, it's irony. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Why would it's, you it's eat like that? Alanis Morissette. And then you've got the sausage, <laughs> and then you've got eggs yeah. and toast. And they've got the thing in Ireland. It's called the soda bread. Okay. Okay. Soda bread is like toast. But it's not because they call it soda bread. Okay. Do they use Diet Dewdrop Extreme? They don't. Sense? They use um. I'm not sure what they use, but they only give you butter. You know, at Bob Evans, you get the jam, you get the jelly tray. I do like the jam. Yeah, I like when they give you the thing. They set it down, and it's got the multiple kinds. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you got the apple butter. Yeah, you yeah. don't get that in no, Ireland. They don't do that. Don't come expecting Bob Evans. Well, maybe this place isn't that good. That's true. Does that occur to you? How was it the room? Could. Was it okay. The room was okay. Have your own bathroom. It had the own the ensuite is what they call it in, oh, in Europe. Okay. The ensuite. I uh, had that, and the water was 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 warm on Friday morning, and I, I got out and I was ready to face the day. So I went over to the uh, the, the now hotel. This, you were just there for one night, right? I was there for three nights. Oh, that was there, every that was night. it. Okay, that was gotcha. the place. Okay. okay, so I went over to the Sheraton. The Sheraton is where Amiga Ireland was. You know, okay. I I'd contacted Earl before uh, on Thursday night saying, hey. 
What time are you going to be there? I want to meet you there. I set up all the streaming stuff. All right. So this is where we're getting into it. This now. is where we're getting into it. All right. Earl has got the twelve hundred out there on the on the on the table. Yeah. He's like, it's time for the creative competition. Right. Okay. This is what he's testing. Yeah, he's testing it out. Nothing works. Oh, it's he, all broken when from the get-go. When he was testing it, it didn't work? Was, the Amiga was not outputting the blue color properly. Okay. okay? I did notice that during yeah. the screen, so that yeah. clearly didn't get Everything fixed. is that, that spinach color. Yeah. Okay? Then he's like, all right, we're going to shift some things over to the MacBook. He had this system on the MacBook where you had to do a three-finger swipe in between. How many times have you done a three-finger swipe? The triple? I don't think I've ever done one. The triple. It's crazy. And so he's like, you do the three-finger swipe twice, then you press down twice on the on the numpad. I did the three-finger swipe one time at the 7-Eleven. Yeah. That, oh, just the one time. No, it was just a one-time thing. I was desperate. I, need, Once, I, I was so hungry. You needed the money. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so anyway, the creative competition did not go well. Well, I mean, now this is this is on setup. This when you guys practiced this before the event, it worked, right? Is that uh, what I've been? Well, yeah, it worked as he was demonstrating. So this it to is me. during the event because we watched this and we saw it didn't work. So people started to filter in. Yeah. Right. I immediately tracked down. Um, I'm I'm looking for people to talk to because yeah. the Friday is not really there. It's the sort of official launch, but it's not really most of the most of the stuff doesn't go down until Saturday. So I talked to I talked to uh, Stephen Fletcher. The guy from the Commodore story. Yeah. And uh, and then, anyway, I, I returned because he's like, all right, we're going to start. Do the three-finger swipe, nothing. Do the down arrow, nothing. Meanwhile, my other buddy, Seamus, this yeah. is Amiga Seamus. Yeah, this is a separate Seamus. Different Seamus. Uh, he's, he's going nuts because he's prepared all of this stuff. And and nothing's going down. All right. We, I was watching this in real time. Yeah. It was... Yeah, and so it was sad but funny. To use your parlance, we yeah. scan the uh, creative competition, yeah, and we move on to the recording of the Amiga Ireland podcast. Right. Because, oh, I didn't see. I didn't catch this part. Yeah, yeah. And so the Amiga Ireland podcast, very short. They just kind of run down a couple of the the news events and things going on. Uh, Seamus is part of the Amiga. It's a it's a Erla and Rob and Seamus. Yeah, they, I listen. They, I've listened to a few of those they, episodes. Of that. Yeah, yeah, they form the core of yeah, the Amiga. They've been Ireland around for podcast. a while now. They've been around for a couple of years. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Edvin has arrived. The uh, the Norwegian contingent has yeah. arrived. Yeah. And of course they, they they come in and they're they're ready to go. Yeah. So you know I'm talking to them. And the Norwegians uh, don't screw around. No, no. I'll tell you who else doesn't screw around is the Czechs. Okay. The guys from the Czech Republic, they yeah. roll in. Dami, I remember his name. There's a guy, his name's like Svern or something like that. And there's the guy that is the admin for Lim and Amiga. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. So, Give him a good pat on the back. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah. So, apparently, Kim Lemon has not been involved with Lemon Amiga for like a decade at this point. And this guy from the Czech Republic, has, he's, he's been shouldering the load. Share the load. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he's been doing it. Does he do any of the uh, Lemon... Uh, doesn't he do some of the Lemon Play stuff? Because it seems like I've heard of yeah. an accent that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, anyway, I sit down with those three guys. And we talk about the um, we talk about what's going down in with the Amiga in the Czech Republic and growing up sort of behind the Iron Curtain. Now, did you tape this? Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. So this, this is this is this yet. is coming out next week. Oh, great. And uh, it's basically where I was like, why didn't you go to the computer store? And he's like, listen, we were we were, it was bread and water back yeah. then. You know, there was no Amiga store. You yeah, had the they, supermarket. They had it rough over yeah, there. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was bad times. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do want to mention that the back at the creative competition. Edvin saved the day because what did happen was we had, there were some mods that were played. Yeah. And we used, do you remember the, the web-based mod tracker? Remember what that's yep. called? I don't remember. The bassoon that. tracker. Yeah, it was great. Edvin's like, bassoon tracker. Earl is like, what? And he's yeah. like, yeah, bassoon tracker. I listen Bam. To, I listen because that's the one that has a ton. You can listen to a ton of mods Right, on but you can also work, upload yeah. local yeah. files yeah. too. So Edvin basically saved the day in terms you know, of creative one, Let me ask you a question. Getting back to the creative just for a moment. Because mm -hmm. I'll watch this with it. In fact, some of the people in the chat now were in the chat then. We were mm. watching this disaster. And I, we kept thinking to ourselves, why doesn't someone just get another computer? There's a thousand Amigas there and stick it on the thing. What was the problem there? That just I mean, surely someone thought of that. I mean, we both talked about the, the fact that they could have just taken this stuff and put it on the Mac yeah. and bypassed the Amiga as sacrilegious as that was. But could they have not just gotten another Amiga? In, in the words of Bubbles, uh, PA to Patsy and Adina, who can say? Yeah, because yeah. the one thing I couldn't figure out is like, even if, I'm assuming this thing, guy had like a uh, SD, uh, like a compact flash card in the Amiga 1200. Pop that, I mean, literally, get the old screwdriver, pop it out, 
Because we, you guys struggled with this for like a good while. It was a long time. You know, and I know it was, it was tough. Time. We were I mean, all gathered around. Thankfully, the art and the mods got played. I was so and happy. The, yeah. I was not the one in charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I felt so bad for that fella. Yeah. You know. Early, you know, he came through like a champ. But after he so did. many years of Amigathon, things going wrong and yes. me just yes. not know what to do, I was just glad to not be the one at the top. Of this the so it was sort of like when you were over at ARG's. Uh, uh, thanks the for thanks for getting just right. Sat there. Just sat there. Thank God nothing went wrong there because we would never. Heard the end of it. So you you interviewed the checks and that one. Now you so you were often sequestered on your own for some of these. Well, this was my plan for the 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 whole of Amiga Ireland. I really wanted to sort of get the global Vox Populi interview where I could interview all the Greeks, you know, and all the Germans and everything. Unfortunately, that did that plan didn't exactly come to fruition because um, on well. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm sorry. Please continue. We were on Friday. You interviewed the checks. Yeah, interviewed the checks. And everything is cool. So Friday evening, it's time. The the crowds have amassed at kebab time. Chris Folds enters. Everybody's here. Edvin, Figgy, Pix, Chris, um, Anthony Jarvis. Let me tell you something about Anthony Jarvis. Yeah. He's given Retro Man Cave a run for his money in terms of smoothest voice. Oh, yeah. He is the man. No kidding. Okay. So, and I apologize. Oh, Rushi. Yeah. Got to meet Rushi for the first time yeah. on, on, on Friday. So that was great. Yeah, you had to, everyone, you had a, t- a ton of the Amigos buddies there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boss Man rolled in. Of course, when Boss Man rolled in, everything stopped and people just turned their heads. Of course, we saw they Graham. Get, it's yeah. funny, the one we saw the most of was Graham. And, yeah. He just had to be drinking because I was watching a lot of this where I was at work. And so Graham would say, at one point, I just sequestered some of this table with a bunch of booze. That's right. So, so we all, yeah, we all talked to him. And we were trying to control him. That's right. Do this, so Graham. as everyone was gathered around the the creative competition table, you can see Graham solo in the shot back there, just pounding down the Guinness. Yeah, that's what so it was like. fantastic to see Graham there. He was chatting with us. That yeah, was fun. yeah, it was great. So Graham, all the crowd, we went for kebabs except for Figgy. Figgy chose wrongly. Figgy chose to go with the Amiga Ireland crowd to the Indian restaurant. Listen, when Ravi, who is actually Indian, is like, this is no good. You know it's no good. So Ravi joined up with us, went on Kebab Town, went to get the kebab. Yeah. Okay. That's Unfortunately, yeah. oh, I forgot about Kebab himself. Alan Kebab yeah. was there too. He had to go. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the kebab was not great. First of all, Alan Kebab didn't even get a kebab. He ordered a kebab when he got with some kind of curry. So this place was no good. Okay. Okay. The kebab was it was sort of a bust. However, it was cool to get out with the fellas, get around talking. We were talking about the royal family. We we're talking about all kinds of nonsense. Yeah. So that was fun. Oh, uh, Martin, I forgot. Thank you, Edvin. I forgot about reflection. Of course, reflection was there too. Yeah. He wouldn't miss one of these. You know, it's it's an unknown fact that when the Amiga was first brought to Norway, they didn't really know how to market it, and DP himself went to visit Martin Reflection yeah. and sort of got some tips on how, how to sort of spread it throughout the country. Really? Not, not a lot of people know that. I didn't know that yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. So not only did Reflection sort of birth the cracking scene yeah. in Norway, but he also was sort of instrumental in getting the Amiga into Norway at, just on the whole. Outstanding. Yeah. Let me, now, you, I know where Abby was there. Dan was there as well, wasn't he? The, was oh, he? yeah. Dan was there. However, Dan, I'm, I think Dan went to the Indian place. Now, the Indian place, there's a whole bunch of other stories that Figgy told me later on, including Dave Haney just falling asleep mid-conversation. <laughs> poor guy. Yeah. Man, poor he dog. was out of it. He was tired. Now, let me ask you, and I'm not, I don't do this to be a jerk. I just, I'm bad with names, and he hasn't been on there that long. Who is the third fellow one? The Retro Hour that's joined in. Do you, I don't know his name. Was he there? They call him, um, he's the Dinosaur Pie, right? No, that's not. What? No. What, that's not even the same podcast. Retro Hour. It's it's Ravi, Dan, and there's the third guy that, that joined in the past year. I don't so. know. You don't know his know. name? Uh-huh. I was wondering if he would went there as well. I'm sure, I'm sure some of the chat will tell yeah. you. But anyway, so that oh was... God, your leaps are just ludicrous. Joe, says Brock101 in the chat. Joe Fox, thank Joe you. Joe Fox. I knew I was, it was killing me. But yeah. I'm guessing he wasn't there. Uh, he was not there. Okay. He was not there. Okay. So, anyway, I, I returned back after, you know, Friday night. It's a, it was a warring success. Yeah. Wonderful start. Yeah. Okay. Well, except for all the failures. I go back to my hotel room and I'm ready for, you know, get a good night's sleep. So I can wake up refreshed and ready for the first, the, really the the full day of Amiga Ireland, which is Saturday. Yeah. 
at about a, you know, 11 o'clock, that's when the disco starts directly across the street in the dance, the, 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 the nightclub. Right. Okay. <laughs> Playing your favorite type of music. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Then, as I'm able to sort of, as you are, kind of kind of absorb that into your brain, you go, okay, I can deal with this. I can sleep. Yeah, yeah. At 3 o'clock in the morning, that's when the lads come back. Yeah. Okay. The bar must close. Yeah. The lads come back. They're not ready for the dance party to stop. Yeah. They want to keep it going in their room. Yeah. So they're coming back. It's just very, very loud. So I don't sleep at all. Did you Friday not take any of your mystery drugs that night? I should have taken my mystery drugs. Yeah, you dropped the ball. That would have been a great yeah. move. Yeah. So anyway, Saturday I'm very tired as I return to the Sheraton. Um, however, it was a good day. Uh, this was the day of the workshops. Yeah. So unfortunately, I missed my good friend Dami from the Czech Republic. His uh, compiling workshop on uh, me. <laughs> but, that would have been lost on you, Bo. Don't lie. <laughs> Don't act like you're like oh, shucks. <laughs> you would have looked at that and stared and much like co- carrier command. It's like what? What are we looking at? But I did uh, catch. Uh, I came in right in time for the light wave 3D um, the uh, workshop, yeah. which was m- my good friend Klerkos yes. from 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 Germany. And uh, so I, I had all that, and of course, pixels. Me and pixels were sort of a unit, yeah, um, a, sort of a moon unit, as we we carried the the all of the recording equipment from one room to the other as things would would, would so they happen. Didn't, they didn't station you in one area; you had to go where the action was. Right, you know? because this year, and it was smart on Earl's part in that he cordoned off like a, a one third section. There was a temporary wall where the workshop people could actually talk and be understood yeah. without the shadow of the beast soundtrack drowning them that out. That was a good was idea. Last yeah, this year, yeah. Yeah, it was a much because the workshops were actually, I mean, they were the best in terms of your interviews and the quality yeah. of the audio. Yeah, yeah exactly. Were, yeah. So we did that, and then after the Lightwave uh, workshop, they brought on a guy called Mike. Yeah, uh, I'm sure the chat will tell me his last name, but he was a former music guy from Psygnosis. He did a lot of, inf- including. Oh, is this the fellow that did the uh, the the uh, protractor? I workshop. did watch this. He was very. That was very cool. Yeah. Mike Clark, thank you. Yeah, Pix. he was. He was out. He was awesome. Yeah, and so um, he did, uh, and it was so cool to watch him because you you saw our awesome you know creations at a, at a media point last year, and this guy was like, okay, and you just lay down a baseline like this, and you saw his hands move lights. Like, yeah, and then yeah. and and you saw him lay down all the parts. It was amazing. I was, was watching so this cool. live as well with some guys in the chat, and we was it was a lot like the light wave thing. We were just like, we, this is too hard. Some of the guys can do are good at this. I will say, getting back to our amigos, we had much more participation in our song contest than they got. That's true. We only got three songs. We got a bunch. Even the three, me, you, and Brent did three songs, so we had, they were horrible. That's true. I will say the songs I got done were good, and the art was great, too. Yeah. There was a lot of good yeah. art. So anyway, we listened to Mike talk about, you know, um, you Pro Tracker and how to how to create a track in Pro Tracker. That was good. And then finally, the last workshop of the uh, afternoon was uh, Pixel Vixen. She yep. came on. I didn't get to see hers. I was a little bit nervous because, it, you know, Mike had done his where he was sitting behind a computer, you know, uh, facing us in the monitor, and Pixel Vixen set up her monitor so it was actually facing out towards us right. and at first I was like well how are you going to do this are you going to be spinning around doing things but no she'd done such a great job at setting up such a structured uh, thing and it wasn't like she was drawing in real time she was basically just showing the various stages of creating pixel art on the Amiga and I'm so happy that she left the CRT facing out because we were seeing the results on the projector and on the stream but man, nothing pops in terms of colors like a CRT. The colors on that CRT just came alive when you're looking at that glass versus looking at the LCD. So I was so happy that she did that because it was amazing to me, um, you know, how much of an issue it is. And it really made me happy that, uh, that I bought that, that CRT monitor because really these games and this art from this era was meant for the CRT. You know, uh, Vicky... I believe someone said she's moving to Japan. Yeah, right here soon. Yeah, she's going to so be teaching English. You don't know if she's going to be around at too many more of these. You never know. Right. And so, yeah, I, I, I I'm, that's what I'm going to watch. And I knew she'd done one, but I, I had to leave to go home when she was setting up. So mm-hmm. it looked good, though. Yeah. It sounded. It sounded like it turned out pretty good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So after that was over, then um, we came back into the uh, and while Pix, uh, Pixel Vixen was going on, concurrently was when Tenmark was doing his interview with Trevor Dickinson. Right. So I was sort of listening to that with one ear as I was watching Pixel Vixen. That, that's what was getting streamed while you guys were doing your recording. Right. Yeah. Right. 
And uh, after that, uh, it was about time to get set up for the big uh, panel. The now, big main event. Yeah, now explain the, the, this to the people. This, this was one of the great, uh, um, you know, Earl and I have been talking about this for months. Because you sent me that email. You were, this was going to be a, a huge discussion, wasn't right. it? Right. So at first I was like, why don't we get me and Dave Haney and Dave Pleasance and Trevor up there yeah. and have a talk? Because Earl had told me there are three house mics, and so we can we can get four of you guys up there, and you can use, like, the podium mic. And at one point, it was even going to be more than that, wasn't it? It's early on. You're, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, and then at the last minute, he comes in, and he's like, all right, we're ready. Who do you want? And I was like, well, you know, Trevor's already been on. He just did an hour on the floor. Yeah. Dave's going to be on after us. So why don't you just I mean, give me uh, Pleasance, Dave Pleasance. Mr. Pleasant. I was like, why don't you just give me Dave Haney? Yeah. And he's like, all right, I'll give you Dave Haney. So I get up there. And, of course, you know, we get the mics. None of the mics have any batteries. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so I was like, great. I get Dave up on stage, and we're just sort of looking at each other. Yeah, the first 10 minutes are just, like, it was, it was, dumber. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was very awkward, and I almost fled. Um, but, uh, but anyway. That's not your fault. You can't do anything about there's that. Nothing, yeah, there's nothing you can do. So, anyway, just to get the ball rolling, before I even get the mic, I was like, so where'd you grow up? He picks up the mic and he just goes. Yeah, Dave Haney is a pro. He's done a few interviews. At He's a pro. Yeah. Uh, he started going, and man, it was the easiest interview in the world because I just pick it up and I'd be like, "Well, what did you think about this?" Boom, twenty yeah. minutes. I love. I love. And how that. about this one? Boom. See, I, and, and the things and, he was talking about. I mean, I love that the it, because it was right up my alley. First, the Jersey guy, mm -hmm. and then. But talk about his early work and stuff. I just uh, you know the I, I listened, sorcerer. I haven't listened to a ton. Of interviews with him, you know. I mean, obviously, everybody knows who he is, but I, I enjoyed that. And then when he started talking about the Exidy and the C16, again, that was tickling my ARG uh, funny bone there. So I was really enjoying it right there. Of course, then the mics started screwing up again. Mm -hmm. Go on. So what happened? Well, you know, we get about 30 minutes in, and I plan on going minimum one hour yeah. with Dave. Minimum one hour. Yeah. Um, because Dave's got a lot of stories, and I've got a lot of things. I've got a whole list of questions Bo that people have weeks. answers. Yeah. yeah he never I, you know, that. And, and I love talking to people. You know, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. I'll sit there and talk to you. I get the signal from Erla. He's like, he's giving me the hand signals. The, and I'm the, like, the urgent rap right, rap. right. Yeah. right. And what I come to discover is that, that Dave Pleasance and uh, Dan Wood have reserved the f uh, five o'clock hour, I believe, for the uh, friend OS presentation. So Dave gets right up to the point where he's getting right into the meat of things. Yeah. The launch of the A2000, which was the first Amiga that he really had his hands in. Yeah. And I said, well, Dave, we got to go. I'll see you next time. Yeah, you could see he was stunned. Yeah. I was he, like, oh. Yeah. Trust and me, so, we were in a chat at that time. We were all like, oh. Right. <laughs> and so uh, at that point, um, you know, I'm just, I'm sort of demoralized. Uh, I feel like everything that I've come here for has been a waste. Um, because anybody can set up a camera and talk, you know, you know and tape workshops. Yeah. You know, anybody can do that stuff. Uh, I, I really felt like, um, you know, lots of people had, had contributed to the cause for me to get to sit there and, and, and talk to Dave and have a real deep conversation with him. And what I should have done was grabbed him right there and said, hey, Dave, let's go into the next room over in the workshop room where there's nothing going on. But you couldn't do that, could you? I couldn't do tell, that. Tell people why. Well. There are two big reasons, but where were they? The first big reason was that, you know, um, DP and Dan wanted everybody in to stay in the room. They wanted everybody there to see the uh, the friend I OS about that. workshop. That was another reason. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second reason was that I, I I wanted to go to mass. I had to go to mass. It was Saturday night. But it was also it was it was near time to tear down. Yeah, and it was also getting time to go because yeah. the way that I'd planned this is as soon as I finished the interview. I was going to take everything down because other than the um, the finals of the game competitions, Amiga Ireland was over at that yeah. point. And so and you they know, had a hard deadline to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I was taking stuff down and stuff like that. And um, and so and as I was taking stuff down, you know, we got out of the way as soon as we could. And as I was listening to uh, Dave and, and Dan talk about Friend, I was like, you know, and this is nothing against Friend and, and all of the, the stuff that they're doing over that, there. Yeah. It's all fine, but it's not really Amiga, and it's not really what the people that came to Amiga Ireland signed up for, in my opinion. 
you know, it, it felt a little bit like going on vacation and being forced to listen to the timeshare presentation at the end of things. <laughs> well, um, I, I, I didn't get, the, they didn't broadcast the ending of this. And so well, they, 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 they didn't said. broadcast it because I was the only person that was doing any broadcasting. I see. So there was no, there was no one that got no, this on their phone no. or anything? And, um, and, and actually Dave sent me a message on Facebook. He's like, uh, can I have the video of the uh, the How about Mr. Pleasant? Yeah, Mr. Pleasant. Yeah. He asked me. He was like, "Can I have a video of the friend talk?" And I said, "Well, I'm sorry, Dave, but I, you know, I was packing up and I didn't record it." And he said, "Well, I was assured that it would be recorded." And I said, oh, "I'm sorry." And and maybe he's found it. Maybe there was somebody else that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, I haven't checked YouTube did I, today. I do hope that that it was recorded because uh, I would hate for him to to not have that recorded because he did go in depth with everything that they've been working on and things like that. But um, at the same time, you know, I just felt like I, it, was, it was a wasted opportunity to have Dave up on the main stage. He was around all weekend, but a lot of guys that come to Amiga Ireland are your typical nerdy guys, and they're not going to want to go out of their way. You know, they revere this man, and they're not going to want to approach him. And, and me, you know, being able to interview him and ask him questions was a way for them to be able to interact with him indirectly. And so it was, it was just... I will, it, I will say, in Mr. Pleasance and Dan's defense on this, that they they were at the mercy of scheduling like anyone else, and so uh, they, that's right. It was just bad and time. It was basically. not. Yeah. It was not David Pleasant, Mr. Pleasance, yeah. or Dan's fault that they just happened to follow this. It was it was the fact that, that there was a time set for uh, Dave Haney to talk, yeah. and then after that, it was just, their their time to come on. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything bad about Friend OS or anything what, about what they're doing. It was just a shame that we, we got a late start with Dave, that yeah. we had technical difficulties at the beginning, and then that we were we were just sort of cut off Probably at the in, end. Probably, and for future reference, bring a guest of that magnitude and, and Mr. Pledges maybe st start those midday or that's something. That's right. You know? That's right. Uh, because that was just, a, that was just and again, the, the hard and fast deadline to get out of there means there's no wiggle room. Right. You know, and this right. happens in a lot of these things. I've seen this happen plenty of times. That's right. And it's, you know, and, I, and it's it's hard to, you know, Erla is one of the nicest, gentlest souls I've ever met in my life. And he's trying to do everything he can to make sure everybody's having a good yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, and it, I, I thought it was a, a, a big success. He had, yeah. it, it was the, it was, it was seriously, it was so much better than last year. And last year was amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there. I wish him nothing but the best for the future. I will say that this is probably the the final Amiga Ireland that I will attend. Not because the event is bad. It's just because it's it's a long journey. It's a long journey, and even though we, I well, I was so happy to have the trip funded through Gun, GoFundMe, um, you know, I still had to take every single personal day that I had off work to be able to make this happen. And um, I would really like to instead use that that time and that energy to visit some of the shows that we have here stateside with you, because uh, people want to meet you, and we can go as a team, and uh, and it, it can just be a lot of fun that way too. Well, I, you know, uh, I thought the uh, the iron, I thought the iron thing was it looked great. It looked like you had a lot of fun. It was so good. And, 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 good and, and so anyway, let me finish. So after I, you know, I went to mass at St. Peter and St. Paul's, the big cathedral there. Oh in, yes, uh, in, I was in, there. In I was there. It was nice. Well, it's interesting. The church is beautiful. Yeah. They look great on when you see the other um, pictures of it. But Catholicism has has taken a, a turn in Ireland. You know, you think about uh, Ireland being the, this, this big Catholic country, but um, the mass is, is not well attended, and uh, and people are just sort of they come and they're in a hurry to get out. And it was, it was, um, it was, it was sort of demoralizing, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> That's all you needed. Yeah, demoralizing the church. Yeah, so good. Um, yeah, people were were saying, but anyway, mass was okay. We we got out of mass and I, I met the crowd. Chris Foltz had this idea to uh, to go to Chinese. Yeah. Okay. This was entirely so Chris Foltz joined. Yeah. And uh, and so everybody, all the amigos met. It was um, and I don't want to try and name them all, but I think there were. 13. I think I think Rushi didn't get to go. When there a couple of didn't. Get yeah, to go Rushi this. didn't get to go. Um, but it was I think it was everybody except for Rushi was yeah. there. Um, and I think there were thirteen of us. I think total. Rushi had his had his kid. There. Yeah, he had his family there. It was a, it was a different deal. But anyway, uh, we were at this Chinese restaurant for two hours and 45 minutes, and Chris Folds had the idea of the night. He's like, listen, nobody order anything. What we're going to do is we're going to order the set menu for all of us. So everybody pay like 30 euros, and they're just going to keep on bringing out food for the whole night. And that's what they did. And Chris was like, listen, 
Give me the give me the set. He he was speaking their language, and they were like, "All right." And they just kept bringing out food. We were passing it around. Of course, Figgy, anything that didn't get eaten, Figgy was on it. Oh, boom! You know those Norwegian guys? They can eat like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. So um, anyway, That's a loot we had a fantastic dinner. I was talking to everybody. I was right in the middle of the table. I was in between sort of the European guys and the Scandinavian guys. You that know, was a the, great the Western picture. Europe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was fantastic. It was so much fun. And, um, and then after that, we all went over to Gertie Brown's. Gertie Brown is the traditional meeting place for the end of Amiga Ireland. Got to say goodbye to all the folks. Then I went back to my room fearful that I would be unable to sleep. However, I'd had a word with Seamus earlier in the day, and I think he passed the word along because I had silence that night. Nice. So Seamus came through in the clutch Good for me. Good to have friends in high places, yeah. eh? I was able to uh, sleep uh, well on Saturday night. And then Sunday morning, Chris Folds, we loaded up the Folds of Mobile, me, Folds, Alan Kebab, and Pixels of Dawn, back to the airport, nice flight home. Here I am. Well, bam, bam, bam. Now, of course, you had a treacherous drive. To get, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's the here now. And that's, uh, that, so overall, it sounded like a pretty good trip. Uh, Absolutely. Except, you know, a few, every trip's got a few fumbles in it. Yeah, yeah. And so I would like to, one more time, <laughs> thank all the fine folks that donated to the GoFundMe to send me back to Amiga Ireland. I want to thank Michael Michatoff, uh, Jason Warns, Edvin Helen, Chris Folds, and John Norris, Ephraim and Junustin, Ian Griffiths, Graham Bebke, Gary Heather, Vicki Lambern, Martin B., Edvin Helen again, Paul Harrington, and Chris Folds yet again. It's fun to look at these names and know that they're I've never heard their real name, and right. I'm gonna guess who they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. So thank you guys so much. Like I said, um, it was it was an experience that I don't think will ever be equaled in that in that same way. It's amazing when you're just sitting down, it's like, yeah, I'm talking to Chris Folds. And it's like, it's Chris Folds. He's not just some guy on the internet, but he's there yeah. right in front of you. I'm talking to Graham Vebke, and he's there right in front of you. You're very fortunate, but yeah. And it, it is awful, awful nice that people uh, kicked in on that. I mean, it's it's a lot to ask, and they and they did it, and were smiling and happy, and, they, and you guys had a good time. I, I think it's dandy. You know, yeah. It's a, a real good experience. You did a good job representing us over there. Well, I tried. <laughs> I tried. Because you really can't do a bad and, job. And, you know, it, one of the things that I'm looking forward to when we go to some of these stateside events is that I won't have any responsibilities to do re recording or anything like that. And so I'll be able to cut loose a little bit more. And, uh, and we'll have a good old time, hopefully, at VCF and Oh, no, I'm like going to sign us up for a bunch of responsibilities. You just, you just, oh, you just yeah. load them down on my yeah, back. Yeah, we're going to be interviewing people. Who would we interview that are, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, really, in America, there's really no one worth interviewing. No, there's anymore. nobody. I guess we can get here. Dave and the guys, the same people that were over there. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, I hopefully you can hook back up with Dave at some point and get a proper interview. I'm hopeful that uh, you know, I sent him a, a Facebook message. I was like, listen, you know, whenever you, whenever you feel rested, it would be great to sort of pick up where we left off and and continue on. So hopefully that'll happen. But uh, anyway, thank you guys for listening to this Amiga Ireland trip report, and we will see you next Friday with a live on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming with a new episode of Amigos, or we'll see you whenever we do on your favorite podcatcher. Until next time. Adios. Adios. <sighs> Good job. All right. Good night, guys. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Thanks for sticking up this late.